Hey, what's going on, everybody? Episode number 47 of Heavy Metallurgy, and um, there's no Alan tonight. He's got out, he's out doing some family stuff, but he is, I think, watching in the chat. How's it going, Alan? And um, the the third the third wheel of the yeah, uh, Heavy Alan. Metallurgy uh, is here with us tonight, Mr. King Fowley. King. Hello. I, you sure, Alan? You sure, Alan couldn't make it because he had a card game, or it was in a car accident, <laughs> a la Peter Chris, a la Ace Frehley. <laughs> <laughs> and that's another thing alan really can't hang uh contribute much to the kiss discography he said so uh um it was i think me and king can uh pull this off pretty effectively <laughs> yeah like i said paul and gene all through the whole thing <laughs> yeah all <laughs> right um king how have you been doing my friend i'm great man i'm fucking fantastic i'm looking forward to this thing this kiss thing we've been talking about for a while um just he's just got out and played again as i was saying earlier uh did a show in atlanta Shandy talkers, Ryan already trying to be the smart guy. He, he's the he's always the fourth wheel. <laughs> Love you, Ryan. But no, just got out playing again. The season's starting to do gigs. We got all kinds of shit coming up, festivals and all kinds of things. Otherwise, doing great, man. Ready to rock. As news, always, news coming soon on shows. So um, definitely, he'll, uh, you'll know when deceased is rolling. And um, before we get going, I do want to once again remind people that uh, Thrash Times at Ridgemont High, the uh, deceased. Old School Thrash covers album is out, and uh, Hell's Headbangers has them available. I put a link in the description to the search of Deceased. You'll get a whole, click the link, you'll get a whole bunch of Deceased merch um, to choose from. And um, Heavy Metallurgy shirts, you want to support the channel, uh, there's a link for those too. But um, we're here tonight to talk about, for me, a lifelong, this, this, is, this band, love them or hate them, I mean, they're greatly, people either love Kiss or they hate Kiss. I don't really think there's a lot of in-betweens. Um, this is a band that got me moving into loving music. Um, I went from, you know, Mac Davis, Neil Diamond, Kenny Rogers, whatever my parents were listening to at the time, to seeing Kiss on TV. It must have been 77 or 78, and my dad said I wouldn't shut up about it, and they you know, my grandma, I think, got me my first Kiss album. I think it was Kiss Alive. And um, ever since then, it, they unlocked the world of music appreciation, whether that's um, that band might be a strange one to do it to somebody, but it did. It got me focused on music and obsessed about music. And I'm sure like King as well, I mean, we've modeled our entire lives after music. We've spent untold fortunes on music and merch and in bands and how about you, King? Where was uh, where was your uh, landing point for Kiss? I, yeah, that's me too. I it was um it was about seven. Yeah, I would say it was about seventy seven. My mother would go with her mother, my grandmother, on the grocery store on Sundays, and they want to spend two hours yapping about what they did all week, you know, things like that. And um, that's funny already too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got to look at everybody's stuff. Hey, meet me too. But anyway, no, they would go in the grocery store for like two hours. And after about 20 minutes, I'm ready to leave. You know, you can only look at Twinkies for so long. You know, I'm saying ho-hos and shit. But yeah. uh, my grandmother would buy me a roast beef sandwich and a fucking grape, 25-cent grape soda in the can. And um, the next thing you know, fucking I'm walking around the magazine things trying to find something to read. I'm looking at sports things, this and that. And I saw this magazine, 16 magazine. Cheap trick. Bay City Rollers. Fucking kiss. And I was like, what the fuck is this guy with this blood? This It drew me in. Like you were saying, as kids, it, it draws you in first because the image pushes you towards it because it's something that just, uh, you know, instant. So um, I didn't hear them. I still didn't know what they were like. And I was in after school recreation uh, till five o'clock. My mom worked and my dad passed away when I, when I was real little. So it was just my mom running the show. But I had to stay at school till five. So this guy, Jeff Pierce, one day said, have you ever heard Kiss Man? I said, no, nah, I want to. And so he gave me a dope. He told me to leave the school premises. This is third grade. He told me to leave the school premises, walk across the street to this fucking total pothead drug addict dude named Victor Myers house. And I knew about this guy just from the, the neighborhood. I knocked at the door and he gave me the Kiss Destroyer record. I walked back over and I'm looking at the record thing and how fucking evil and my, they're floating in hell, you know, kind of thing. And I got to the, the fucking basement. We got out the stereo, you know, the speakers and, the, you know, that old turntable. This is talking 77 here. And so I uh, put this fucker on the turntable and it's Detroit Rock City. And all they're talking about is this guy dying. And I'm like, man, what the hell is this band is insane. First, they're floating <laughs> to hell. Now it's about death. And then Detroit Rock City came on and I started headbanging, I guess it was. And yeah. Jeff's like, yeah, King's a rocker. Look, he's a fucking rocker. And I was like, yeah, I love this. And we played it on. We heard the kids talking, you know, behind God of Thunder. 
And uh, the next thing you know, fucking, I was, I was addicted. So my mother, I asked her, could we go to Montgomery Ward's department store, buy a record oh, yeah. there? And I wanted Kiss, I wanted Kiss Alive too, which was just coming out. And I saw Gene with the blood. It wasn't about what songs wanted. It was what's the best picture on the record. Yep. And Gene yep. with the blood, the, the greatest Gene Simmons picture of all time. I would go on record saying, "Oh yeah." Well, that record was fucking astronomically priced for the time. My mom said, "Sorry, sugar, you can't get that." So. We went over and I decided on rock and roll over because I liked the way the circle of the heads went. Killer and artwork. I thought yeah. last second my turntable on my needle on my turntable was funny, so I fucking ended up buying it on cassettes. And that was my first Kiss record. It's still my it's still my favorite. So I'll just give that away. It's like I, it's my one. It blew me away. And after that, it was all Kiss, 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 Kiss. Yep. Went to my friend's house, saw them on HBO. I think it was seventy eight from Japan on there. Next thing you know, it was 79. It was my birthday weekend. I saw Kiss at Largo Dynasty, my first concert ever. Kiss was special guest, New England. Blew me a fucking way. I still have the Kiss Army sponge that I caught from the disco ball that night. <laughs> <at> the end <laughs> of the set. And that's, that was um, 43 years ago. So I still have it. It was July 7th, which my birthday is July 6th. It was July 7th, 1979. So I'm a Kiss fanatic. They have the songs. They have all of it. People that don't like it, whatever. Don't like it. That's your thing. I know good songwriting. They got the hooks. I could name, I could write on paper right here, 75, 80 songs by Kiss that mean the world to me. That's yep. way more than about any other band. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for me too. And I've had to, you know, this band for me over the years, I mean, I recently come to the realization, I mean, like last year I was, you know, I got reconnected with my kiss records and there's a few I'm missing on vinyl. I'm trying to fill that out. And, um, I was listening to a bunch of the old records shit I've had since I was like, I've got all these records I've had since I was a kid. And, um, I said, you know what? I think kiss is my favorite band and it feels weird to say that. And it feels kind of gross to say that because I'm not going to lie. I mean, they're, you know, you see a lot of interviews with the band and uh, Paul and Gene and, you, you know, and Ace even, and they've lived a very long life of arrested development. I mean, they've had people catering to them and their asses kissed for how many years? And, you know, they, they embody that rock star mentality. And I don't know necessarily that I always like them as people, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I mean, let's be honest here. Kiss, kiss is a band that went beyond everything. I mean, movies made on your band on TV, biggest band in the world, comic books. I mean, just the whole thing was, was no pun intended, larger than life. I mean, and he just I yeah. did it all. And I mean, how could anybody survive those times? You know, it's amazing. And they did. I mean, they did. So, I mean, Peter and Ace were obviously the rock and roll casualties of that band. They didn't die, but Ace, it wasn't for lack of trying. Ace wrapped a bunch of cars around trees and yeah. telephone poles and shit. And, ace and peter both with drugs and drinking and all sorts of stuff but gene was always sober his addiction was uh pleasures of the flesh and paul i think paul drank wine and smoked weed once in a while but he was i think out of all of them paul i kiss is paul is paul's band Absolutely. i mean it may it may not have started out that way but as the years went on and members come and go and gene's um his uh his mind would wander to film or business. To be a hollywood guy yeah, and it um he was the one that held the fort down, which you know, more power to him. And and he went and he stuck it out through the thick and the thin. I mean, when Kiss was without makeup and only filling a quarter of a stadium, I mean, like we talked about Black Sabbath, you know, you saw Iomi, there wasn't, you know, the Tony Martin era, there wasn't a lot of people watching Black That's Sabbath. Right. <laughs> so I mean, all no. these legacy bands go through this shit because a band like Kiss is more or less stayed the same all these years but um the times change around them and it isn't always a good fit i mean the thing for me going back listening to these records and you know things i listen to and sing you know it's all dna it's all part of my dna at this point but listen to the lyrics and even as they got older and older and older i mean some of the shit's pretty cringy still talking about you know trying to hook up with women and it's just like <laughs> it, it, it's <laughs> I, I, you know, I found myself over the years saying, why am I listening to this? But, you know, it all boils the songs back. songs were that good, man. 
the songs were that good and it also it plays into nostalgia for me it's my i grew up with these records i mean this yeah, was yeah, that's the thing we talk about i talk about this on my facebook page all the time with people it's not always the band that you're still in love with it's the memories of the time in your life that you're in love with I, yes. i'm not I'm taking it away from any, whoever's music you're talking about there's certain bands i mean i'm going to use the band triumph as an example there's just any song i hear puts me in a place and leaves me there and kiss has so many you're talking about kiss alive and all that stuff i can remember sitting in my basement with the pool sticks out on the fucking we had a pool table on the end and the tennis rackets and us come on mom we're gonna do a kiss concert come downstairs we'd grab the ketchup we'd spit it on the floor we'd light something on fire and it would be we were kiss <laughs> you know yep. we, would, we would i remember my mom one time no joke sitting through all four fucking sides of kiss alive one while we lip synced at the basement and she, i remember her saying mama's got a pot roast in the oven sugar i gotta go yeah, <laughs> I remember when my grandma would babysit me. Uh, she got me that Kiss Alive record, and we're sitting there playing Rummy, and uh, she was probably drinking a beer. She swore like a sailor, and you know, you're listening to it all Paul's stage banter about drinking and saying fuck and this and that and the other thing. My grandma's like, Jesus Christ, what are we listening to? But she never. That was one cool thing. My family never discouraged the things I was into and listened to when I had friends that their parents were throwing their kiss records away because they were evil. And, you know, I just, I'm so, I feel so thankful that my parents never discouraged that. I know your mom was very supportive as well. Same way. Same way. Yep. And, and you, you know, that, that, you know, you know, my, my suck ass trap drug, drug years and shit. If I didn't have that music to bounce back on, I might not have made it through it because that, that was my real drug and I shouldn't have ventured elsewhere, but that's, you know, music is my drug. For and sure. mama folly. I mean, she, she stuck by you through thick and thin too. And you know what? She was a she wonderful sure lady. Cheers to her. I never met her, hey. but I've heard your stories. Hey, mama. Man. <laughs> Cheers, Mama. Mama Folly. Mama. Mama. <laughs> but um, you know, it's uh it takes a uh, family behind you to support you. And even though getting into music and wanting to do bands might not be the most practical thing in the world, you're not gonna make a bunch of money doing the music we do. <laughs> but it's fun, it's our heart. Love it. And we partially get to thank this band right here for setting us on that journey for sure. And uh, I do want to jump into a little bit of history here for those that may not be inclined. Um, Kiss, the roots of Kiss go back to 71 with the band called Wicked Lester. Uh, Paul and Gene were in that band with a couple other guys. Uh, they recorded one album for Epic Records who shelved the album and uh, the band broke up in 72, which I can't believe a major label with a uh would sign a band called wicked lester but um shortly thereafter gene and paul wanted to continue on in a more heavy direction so they re they formed kiss the two of them in 73 they came across peter chris add in rolling stone drummer that is willing to do anything um Ace was another ad he he uh no he ace responded to an ad that in uh, through an audition um Paul came up with the name and Ace designed the logo. Correct. And all four of them came up with their own personalities and their iconic facial images, which they brilliantly um, kept their true identity, their faces away from the public eye in the day where there was no internet and cell phones, where, you know, all of the, the photos that were shot were all obviously staged. They did that for Mark. I mean, it was kind of brilliant marketing what they did. Um, to everybody made from front of them for the marketing and their selling and stuff. But now every fucking band has beer and fucking, you know, un baby underwear and everything. They're all doing what kiss was doing before them. They were yep. putting their name on anything to get their fucking name out there. It was their quote unquote brand. You yep. know what I'm saying? It, it, and that's just how it goes. I mean, back there, that's all there was. I mean, you played a concert, you got paid for the concert and, and t-shirts weren't even that popular yet. We're yep. going to sell concert programs and t-shirts and fucking whatever. Yeah. Satin jackets. Yeah, more power to you. Necklaces, kiss pendant. I remember during the oh, heyday, wow. I would my mom would get the JC Penny catalog, and in the middle of the JC Penny catalog, there'd be the kiss shirts, the iron on kiss shirts with the with their image in each letter. And man, I would just shit my pants begging for that crap. And finally oh, yeah, it would show so. up and I would I you couldn't take that shit off of me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd take a shower with it on. Wash and wear, baby. <laughs> That's right on. But anyway, um, we've got quite a few albums to get through, and I think um, the two of us, the Lean and Mean crew, I think we can do this, uh, sharing stories. and Oh, talking yeah. About albums. Oh, yeah. But um, Kiss started 1974 with this album right here, Kiss. That is Kiss. Uh, my version is the one with the 
extra tracks on it, uh, Kissing Time and um, fuck, I don't even remember. Because there was a version of this that came out with not yeah, just two ki- songs. Just, yeah. just, just Kissing Time. It was yep. just Kissing Time. It was just Kissing Time, yeah, yeah. But um, what do you what do you think about this one? Okay, well, you know, I, when I talk about uh, great all-time debuts, my all-time favorite debut album is Van Halen because I thought the album sounded very played and they were ready for it and rolling. The thing I thought about this Kiss album was the songs were fucking phenomenal, but I thought they played them all too stiff, too slow, and safe. Ah. I mean, you know, we'll get to it when we get to it, but like Kiss Alive, these songs on there and Kiss Alive, they're, they're fucking, they're worn in, they're shit hot. Yep. Here, it, to me, it's very slow. And there's, you know, obviously like the ending of Black Diamond, for example, that ending when it just slows down and slows down and, and it ends. I mean, it is what it is. I really think they were just playing it safe, wanted to get the album out. But the songs, uh, you know, just talking about the songs, I mean, something like Deuce. You know, it, it's fucking, it's brilliant. Everything they still open up with that. That or Detroit Rock City, they open with that shit. Exactly. Yep. It's great stuff. I mean, you could tell they were still stuck in the early 70s when you have like the love theme to kiss and the, yep. some of the stuff that was left over from Wicked Lester. And um, it, it, it's good. It's just, it's not the songs. It's the playing it safe of it. And I, yeah. and I was, and I think we just did this with Iron Maiden a few you know months back. Same thing. I thought that was very tame in comparison to how it could have been. It wasn't. It wasn't. The record's not alive. We'll blame some of that on the producing, and we'll blame some of it on the band. But it's very stiff. It's very slow. It's very non. It's sort of energetic, but it's not where it needed to be. So as a debut, I, you know, we're, we're going to go on our one to ten ratings like we did with the Maiden thing. I would give it a six. I would give it a six. I would go hot. I mean, the songs are better than the six, but with the production bringing it down, that's where it is. You know, and I'll even use the album cover art as an example. Peter Chris's makeup's not all there. Gene nope. Simmons' makeup's not all there. You know what I'm saying? Ace has his uh, silver on his hair at the time and things like that. So they were they were learning the ropes. And you know, it's yep. a debut. It is what it is. It could have been supersonic, deathophonic, but instead it was just a good kiss record. It's a very weird production. I will give you that. It's very clean and strange and um we, it might be good to note now that um, this is when Kiss was still writing their... Yeah, there was some bring up from uh, Wicked Lester for sure. They'd use that on a few albums. But um, this is the band writing their shit. And as the years drug on, it started to be Gene working with people, Paul working with Desmond Child, Gene working with Brian Adams, you know, whoever Gene could uh, wrangle into a studio. And both of these guys would do that to fill out their demos. And then they'd get together and argue over whose song was better. And I mean, there was always a competitive streak between Gene and Paul when it comes to the songwriting thing. And, um, and that's a good thing because they, it is a good thing. Down, they wanted the best between them, but that little bit of that, you know, that co- conflicting, you know, fucking, you know, I'm the best. I think it worked to their advantage because it pushed them both harder. Yep. And one thing that's to be not- noted about kiss. And I don't know if it's because Gene, you know, He's Jewish. He's an immigrant to this country. Um, he learned English while he was in America as a very young boy. And the lyrics on the early Kiss stuff are just fucking weird, man. It's just <laughs> weird. Um, yeah. I mean, we'll get into it like watching you and you know having sex with uh, going blind <laughs> an amputee in front of a bunch of people. I mean, it's just what the fuck, you know, going blind, all that stuff, and um. Yeah, I mean, it's got all that. It's got Strutter. We've got nothing to Strutter's lose. A, Strutter's a phenomenal song, but it really, of any song on there, I would say that and Black Diamond, those two, man, they just, the production just really hurts them. They just can't shine. They're just so fucking barely moving. Yep. yep. And I got to say, the early Kiss stuff, one of my favorite things about it is Peter Chris's vocals. To me, early on, he was the shining vocal star of the band. Paul had a weird quirk. I liked it. Gene has always kind of been my favorite vocalist for Kiss. He's got a even I, even as we listen to Monster, Gene sounds like he's 16 singing still. His voice is not really aged much. Paul, obviously, we all know he's yeah. had surgeries and problems. I mean, I get it. We get older. Well, his range is much harder to keep. Too. Yeah, yeah, and they yeah he he sings in that what high C or whatever. I don't know exactly, but um they've had to tune down to accommodate him. He's had backing tracks, but Gene still shines. But these early days, man, you want to talk about a raspy, bluesy, amazing, dirty voice with a lot of character. It was Peter Chris and I agree. singing while playing those drums. Um, Black diamond. 
to this day is a killer fucking song. Um, it is. Another it is. another one on here that I really really like is a hundred thousand years. That's some really cool riffing, really heavy, dark. Um, it's just really cool how they crafted these songs. You could tell they were just jamming this shit out in the studio, you know, rehearsal, um, coming up with some cool stuff for the time. Yeah, you're you're old enough. You're old enough to remember this if you remember the commercial. Do you remember the Mr. Pib commercial? Remember the drink, Mr. Pib? Oh yeah. There's a commercial they used to have. I think it was like the late '70s, early '80s. If you go YouTube and it see see for yourself, see how close that that music and that thing is to the baseline in hundred thousand years. I always thought, man, these motherfuckers either are kiss freaks or it's just it's coincidence. But that's just something when you brought that up. Yes, hundred thousand years, especially live when you get to the kiss alive. Woo, yeah, unfucking real. That's it. That's I mean, what I think you would agree with this. I mean, what was heavier in America at this time? You know. Even even at this point, I mean, what was heavier? There was not much heavier music in America at that time at all. So well, when you're you had Ted Nugent and Aerosmith, heavy metal, you know, yeah, I know they weren't heavy metal in their world yet, but it's pretty fucking heavy for the most part. I mean, yeah, it's it's got its glam, it's got its it's got its pop sensibilities to it too of the time because you could tell they wanted to do all that. But I'm sure you know, as they've said many times, Zeppelin and Free and all that was their influences. But it's pretty goddamn heavy, man. And to yeah. have seen it on a stage and not in that that production. Must have been really fucking crazy for seventy on stage seventy three recorded seventy four, yeah, you know kind of stuff. And they're hungry. You could tell they were hungry. And um, you know, Paul over the years has made no secret of the fact that he'd hear songs from English bands on the radio that he liked, and he would rewrite, he would deconstruct the songs and turn them into Kiss songs. And um, there's yeah, there's tons of people that still do that to this day. They're most yeah. of them are, are uh, retro thrash bands, <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. So okay. That started the ball rolling. Uh, what, ball you, what is your the, number on that one, Marty? Oh, I mean, uh, you're connecting childhood to this thing. So, <laughs> I mean, kissing time, no matter how you slice it, that song is balls. It didn't, it should, they did it for a, a radio yeah, promo, was, yeah, contest. promo contest. They, threw they it on didn't there. want it on the album, but they put it, the label put it on the album, the remake re issue of the album anyway. And right. um, that, that song, anyway, a slice it is just balls. But, um, other than that, I'm just looking at the, you know, love theme from Kiss. I even like. I mean, they're really. I like that too. There really isn't, other than he's I mean, got Firehouse. We've got Cold Gin. I mean, that's a Ace Frehley song. He was too bashful to sing, so Gene sang yeah. it. Um, let me know. <laughs> I even kind of like that song. It's it's, it's an odd one. That's very Beatles. <laughs> very Beatles, but fun. And I yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I would. I'd give this a 7.5. I'm okay. going 7.5 to maybe. I like eight. the rating system it's ever since the maiden thing we did. Yeah, yeah. No, it's cool. I, I remember all this in, in 10 years. I'm like, remember when you gave that a 7.5? <laughs> <laughs> right. like, no. What were you thinking? Yeah. <laughs> okay, next up, uh, the same year. We, this is to be something to be noted as well. Um, the band would get in a station wagon and travel across the U.S. and they'd get back, and Neil Bogart, the head of Capitol Records, would say, Shit's not selling. You need another fucking record to get this ball, to keep this ball rolling. If if we're going to do this, you need to do it. So in the same year, they pulled out Hotter Than Hell, this album, That's 1974. Right. Um, iconic cover, probably the strangest cover and the strangest back cover. The back cover is insane. And yeah, with the, I mean, the nudity and the stars over the nipples and all that crap. Yeah, that, the hedon the the hedonistic, that hedonistic photo shoot of theirs that they did on this. It's a very strange, and it's, at its core, a very strange and fucked up album. Lyrically. <laughs> um, what do you think about the music on this one? I think this is their Black Sabbath tribute album. It's wow. their, I mean, people, you know, we'll get, we'll, as we roll, we'll get the Creatures of the Night and all the quote unquote heaviest ones. I think this is Kiss's heaviest fucking record, man. I mean, it, the goddamn guitar is intense on this thing. I mean, especially Strange Ways, right out of the gate. That's got to be one of their heaviest tunes. That's got all the bends and stuff of all the stoner rock that came after it. Going Blind. I mean, that's got to be one of the first Doomy tracks as, as I knew. And as a kid, it weirded me out because I was just like, what's going on? Because, you know, Kiss, you were used to by then. I was used to the anthems. Shout it out loud or rock and roll night. And going back and getting these. Well, these were, when I, by the time I got into Kiss, these were in the cheapy bands. This record was in the cheapy band. It was probably $3 and, you know, 29 cents or two for five yeah. back at Sam Goody's in the 70s, which was then called Strawberries or something else. And 
I love this record when I first got a hold of it. I thought it was so fucking cool. It was much improved from the first one. They, they just seem like now they're like, they got a little bit of slide to them. They got a little bit of you know, the, the, you know, the balls out now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I don't, I mean, I, if I look at the track listing, which I pretty much know it, but to go in order, like main lines a little bit on the Peter Chris is, is a weirdo kind of yeah. uh, school that was written by Stanley. It definitely has that, but strange ways. And fucking watching you is heavy as shit. Strange Ways was an Ace song. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Ace definitely blew that one out the door. Got to choose to open it up was totally cool. You could instantly tell they were getting there. It's still not moving full motion, but it's definitely a much more improved and definitely way heavier album. I mean, I just think the production, I like the way the bass rolls on it. I like the tone of both guitars. And I, again, Peter Chris, I think he shines the most on this locally again when he does get to go again, which yeah. isn't as much as he probably should have. You know, I see, you know, fucking Gene. Gene was coming into his own, too, because he his personality of the demon or whatever hadn't really started on the first time. He was starting to get that little uh, cockiness in his voice. And, you know, like I, before it became the God of Thunder back then, he was more like the God of Pussy. You know, like, you know, he's like, yeah, hey, I'm a lover, motherfucker kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. But I liked I, I really liked the record. I thought it's really fucking cool. I just liked I liked everything about it. It still had a little bit of a tinny production, but it was definitely their heaviest fucking attack on any record, I think. Like unintended, maybe even. Yep, I I will say production wise on this, the drum sound is an abysmal. It sound I was saying this the other night at it's band tinny. practice. The it sounds like he's beating on wet pizza boxes the next house over, and they just stuck a mic out the window and recorded. Well, <laughs> I think it's, it's almost like, like the drums on the first record, but the guitar is so much heavier now that you can it really stands out as tinny, considering how much heavier the guitar tone is. Yeah, you know, I don't think the, guitar, the drums really change that much from the first record too much. But I mean, you know, he was, as you know, he played a small kit and he, and he, he wasn't a rock drummer. He was, you know, he was more of a jazz swing yeah. big band kind of yep. guy. He was kind of bringing that kit to the table, but yes, I agree with you. The drums, the drum production's bad. Yeah. Real bad. But, um, I think Ace really shines on this. His songs like Parasite, he, he like yeah. Parasite, you listen to that and you listen to Strange Ways. Strange Ways is like a, a weird, almost doom type of song. Like you said, Sabbath. Yeah. Um, Parasite. It sounds like it's about to fall apart. That riff is just, it's yeah. it's got like a, a sloppy, perverse, chaotic style that, but he's influenced me because on every single one of these fucking songs, I can hum along with the solo. And that's the kind of solo I like. I don't need Ingve, Donut Hate, and Malmsteen fucking, you know, theatrics. This, I like simplistic. I'm, and I'm right there with you. It's They're a fitting. song within a song. Fitting. It's a song They're within fitting. a song. Yep, very fitting. Um, got to choose. Great parasite. Great going blind. A fantastic fucking song. And yeah, it's one of their most underrated tunes for sure. The best cover ever is a Melvin's uh, off of Who Yeah, they did they, do a good job. On they that. did a great job on. They really captured the essence. Hotter than hell. Let me go rock and roll. That's you know that was uh, rock and roll all night before it was rock and roll all night. You know. Yep. All the way. I really like that song. A good song. Watching you very cool like i said uh lyrics um having sex with an amputee in front of people i think uh is very strange mainline is probably the weakest song on the album yeah coming home's a great paul song strange ways great closer they they left it perverse and weird you know they left this album this to me is an eight this isn't almost a nine album for me uh, easily what do you think rating wise for me i would go 7.5. 7.5. I'll go 7.5. 7. Um, uh, the, the drum sound brings it down. Um, main line brings it down. And um, I wish, it, I, well, I, I'm going to say this about the next couple. Well, definitely the next record. I wish it was a little longer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it seems like yeah. it gets in and gets out real quick. I, 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 for some of these later records where they start putting way too many songs on the record, I could have gone for two more on this one. Though it's right. fitting. It is, you know, there's still, what is it, nine, ten songs. It is what it is. Well, exactly. And the one thing, you know, to be noted as well, they're putting out two albums a year. These aren't long albums. They're just not because yeah. they didn't. I mean, they're trying to strip mine some shit from their past, the w- Wicked Lester stuff, the, which they do again on the next album. But um, yeah, this, re- this record's like 31 minutes. Yep. Longer than Rain and Blood. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But still, you know, 7.5 for me. It's definitely a step up from the debut. One and a half points for me. Right on. You know what, everybody, you know, thank you for being in the chat. I've, um, yeah, cheers everyone. 
there's so many people commenting and I'm trying to, you know, hang in the conversation with King. I might not be pulling you up as much tonight, but I love you. Yeah, all. I'm not and seeing any. I saw like four. So if anybody's saying something, hey, cheers to you. I always try to answer the next day. If anybody has any questions down underneath, I'll come there and type tomorrow when it's one on one there kind of because we roll in here right on. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, we appreciate y'all and thank you for hanging out with us tonight. But um, that brings us up to 1975 with Address to Kill. Still, financially, Kiss is tanking hard. No one gives a fuck or they don't either know what to think about them. They think they're a spectacle or they just don't give a shit, even though they are doing. I don't know what the hell I did to this thing. It's all fucked up. I need a, <laughs> newer, a better copy. It yeah, looks you, like. you went for the kill. <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah. You were just um, smart. Dress to Kill, third album. Um, Bill of Coin suits. Uh, yeah, bar cover. Suit. Yep. <laughs> None of these suits fit Gene. None of these suits fit any of them, really. Yeah. <laughs> great, but, uh, great cover art. Let's go right there. Great cover art. Holy it's very shit. cool. Yep. Totally fucking unique. Okay. Now, now you're talking. From if you're going to ask me what, what I think of it, now you're talking. Yep. This is the first real Kiss album for me. This record has a lot of songs that stay under the radar to this day that I fucking love so much. Room Service. You Good know, song. You talk, if you just come right out of the gate and just start going down, love her all I can, Room Service, anything for my baby. These are all Paul Stanley type type written songs where his love for the band, the Raspberries, that like pop rock. Yep. If you, if you There's a bubblegum pop to it for sure. One of his favorite one of his favorite bands is the Raspberries, and this record shows it. And you still get the fucking heavy of rock bottoms on this fucker. You get She, which is pulled from the old days. Yeah, that was around. a Lincoln Lester song. And then that's you my, get that's my favorite get, song on this. Then for me, and then you get one of the best kiss songs ever written and come on and love me. I love that song. It should have been a fucking single before rock and roll. Yeah. It's fucking phenomenal. I, I love the energy of this record. It's loose. And I, I think I remember when they talked about this, they literally were writing these songs in the hotel. Some of them right, right there before they go and record. They were sitting in their hotel going, dude, we need another song. We, no, there's nothing. These, this album is even shorter than Hotter Than Hell. Yeah. And these songs are rolling in at like 250, 248. Yep. You're talking Paranoid, the song, uh, lengths. But the, the choruses are so catchy, man. Love I mean, her all it, I can. That's a song with a lot of oh, Gene's baseline. Come on, yeah. man. You're talking and about just it the now. way Paul's Paul sing with a lot of fire on that song, and there's like this really heavy backbeat to it. And then when that <laughs> solo kicks in, it's like yeah. And then, and awesome. then going blind's little fucking brother, ladies in waiting, man. That's yeah. another one of dark tunes. You know, it's got it's got a haunting. You know, that demon's coming. That you know, he's still the fucking pussy. <laughs> He's still the pussy eater, but now he's the fucking he's starting, the demons are coming, you know? <laughs> I love Dress to Kill. It's one of my favorite Kiss albums. It's fucking great. I love the cover art. I think the production's, again, it's cheap, but it's all right. I mean, to me, Rock and Roll Night's one of the worst tunes on it. <laughs> oh, my God. If I never hear that song again, I'd be fucking Even, even back then, I always thought, eh, this isn't one of the best songs. It was like, they were going. you could tell they were going for the Gary Glitter fucking, you know, sweet anthem of the time. It was totally obvious, you know. That's where they were they're headed. You know, we read the, we've all read the books, and we know they were. Yep. But man, I love this record. I mean, fucking dude, I would give this record a, a nine point five. This gets a nine point um, five for me. Rock and roll all night is a uh, two is a Gene song and a Paul song. Parts of the two songs crammed together in a in a hotel room des fit of desperation. We need an anthem. We, we need, need something. <laughs> we need it now. There's yeah, <laughs> yeah. I need I need cash now type of situation. We need cash now. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it paid off. And uh, again, I like the class of the album cover. It's another one that's unlike any of their others. They didn't have, you know, their their stage outfits, their persona. They have just have their makeup. It's very stripped down. It's very New York. I mean, it's taken very in their element. Too. Tongue very tongue, tongue in cheek. First time you saw like a little bit of a comical side to kiss. Yep. And, um, you know, this is a great one to go in the car because I'm singing the whole fucking time. The windows are yep. down. I'm hitting the steering wheel, singing along. And you can listen to it twice while running errands because it's so short. That's but, um, again, they needed something to get them back on the road and try to make some money because Casablanca was putting every ounce of their money up their nose. And Johnny Carson. <laughs> and Johnny yeah. Carson. Yeah, exactly. And disco albums. That was another thing that was happening around this time, too. <laughs> but, um, motherfucking Donna Summer. Yep, I would go. I would go a nine with this album as two. With this too, I know. mean, the it's hotter than hell and dressed to kill are the one two punch. I think. Um, I think hotter than hell is perverse and weird. This is a lot more composed. Um, 
polished. I mean, the sound is starting to come together. The production's coming together. And it's got that song, She, which is another Sabbathy song. Again, it's a Wicked Lester song, re, re, uh, retrofit for, for Kiss in 1975. And what a fucking rocker. I mean, that is such a great fucking song. Um, it is. I love this album. I look at it and I want to listen to it. It's just the yeah. way it is. Absolutely <laughs> great. And, and Marty will be back in 27 minutes and 34 seconds. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> King, hold the fort down. I need to go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but what happened, um, this, is, this isn't this is a studio album. Well, it kind of is. Um, but it's worth noting, uh, Alive 1, 1975. They needed something to put out to keep the ball rolling. And this album took off. This album started to get some traction. It, even though they couldn't use hardly any of the uh, the live um, audio footage from it, because you watch them from this time, Paul's jumping all over the fucking place, and half the time he's this far away from the mic, and then he's up on the mic, and yeah, you know, all the jumping and shit. You're not playing tight when you're performing, you know. And um, so they went in with Eddie Kramer, I believe, yep. in Electric Ladyland, and they did the studio. Uh, <laughs> The no studio, ball, baby. Yep, studio magic. And um they captured Eddie somehow captured the live essence of Kiss on two LPs. Phenomenal and this, record. That, this that's is a, a phenomenal 10. record. That's a fucking 10. That's one 10. of the best live albums ever, overdubbed or not. All, all those fucking records, all the classics are, no matter what anybody wants to tell you. It's a they fucking the, 10. That that start yeah. to finish is beautiful, man. They so, play the songs faster with uh piss and vinegar and um the drum solo bit you know you know all that paul stanley fucking rattle in there you know you know how many people out there like to taste alcohol you know all that yeah. i used to play that whole peter chris drum solo at deceased band practices i'd play the whole part and you know and they're like this motherfucker six minutes i'm like you better chill out because i'm playing all of it <laughs> <laughs> all right break it down aces solo all that stuff the, you know every, even rock and roll night comes to life on this fucking thing man and um another thing to be noted about ace freely you know you see interviews with the guy and he really doesn't strike anyone as the the sharpest tool in the shed never did um back in these days though he apparently kept the drink until after the show and um, he would go out and perform, and his solos were unique. Um, he's got the, you know, the, the he made the guitar, the the pickup that you hit the pickup, it drops in, the smoke bomb comes out, which had never really been done. Yeah. He had yeah. the later on, he was shooting rockets out of the the headstock. I mean, he was kind of a kind of a idiot savant when it came to tinkering with shit. You know what I mean? It was with he, gadgets. He, and, he was a he was a guitar hero then for me. He was a guitar hero. Yeah. This point of kiss, he's a guitar hero for me. And I'm not yep. a guitar player, but he just, I was blown away by everything that came out of this band. He was the yep. one that you would see. Like, Paul was an amazing showman. Gene was fucking definitely the visual. Peter, you know, kept the back beat, but Ace was just like, he had something there. And I'm not, yep. a, and Ace is my least favorite guy in Kiss, if we were talking now. But at this time, he was the man. I was like, this motherfucker here is shining. Yep. You know, he, shining. He, he knew how to lay, like we were saying earlier, he just, it was fitting. It laid, everything he laid was perfect over the top of what they had. Yep, and Kiss, um, they started to see after this r record, I think they went back out after this took off for this record, and um, this, the stadium started filling up, and the foothold was in Detroit. That's where uh, the, the, the blue-collar, the working-class folks took to Kiss. They, they went, and they had a good time. They were given a show. They liked that raw rock, you know, coming out of the days of MC5, and also in Iggy and the Stooges and all that shit, it rings true in, in Michigan. You know, Southern Michigan is a working, hardworking um, part of the state. And according to really, Kiss, according to Kiss, Bob Seger, the only band that ever could could, could stay toe and toe to toe with them on stage was Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band, right there in Detroit. Yep, Grand Funk was another one. Grand yep. Funk, uh, Led Zeppelin came through Detroit, and uh, Grand Funk opened for them, and people were jumping so violently in the stadium they were afraid that the there was like a basement underneath it they thought the whole place was going to collapse they ended up in the basement don't look yeah, at they, the basement yeah they led zeppelin didn't want to follow them i mean the michigan bands rock hard and i've said, said this before on my channel one little side caveat here uh um bob seeger lives up here somewhere and he, he used to anyway and um his tour manager steve and his wife teresa 
opened up a record store here in Traverse City called New Moon Records, and that's where I got a lot of my old classic oh, cool. death and thrash metal albums. People would get born again, take them into New Moon Records, and Teresa, she's like, I don't know what these are, and she put them like a dollar ninety nine each on them. And uh, my buddy worked there and gave me the phone. She's like, Honey, I got a bunch of records. Come down and see what I got before I put them out. I'm like, Okay, cool, I'm coming. Hey, that's but, cool um, shit. I wish they had some cool stories, man. Yeah, the fucking uh. Yep, tour manager for Bob Seeger owned that place. He was a nice guy, too. Um, awesome. Anyway, yes, Kiss Alive won. Put the band on the map, and it afforded them a little bit of money to get a real producer in the studio. So they set forth with this thing, which um, is a big, humongous turning point for Kiss. Um, they will say it, and they still play 90% of this album live, and to the point where... I really don't want to ever hear this album again. <laughs> We've all heard these songs so much, but Kiss Destroyer, King, what do you think? Well, Bob Ezrin comes aboard. He's just made Alice Cooper a fucking household name. I yep. figured if you could pull that bizarre motherfucker into the fucking, you know, into proper fucking radio fucking status, he could do the same thing with Kiss. Yep. What he did for me with Kiss, Kiss was he polished them up way too much. Mm -hmm. He started putting the, the piano notes over the guitars to make it quote unquote heavier and things like that. Um, this record to me, I'm going to go on record and say is one of the most overrated records of classic records. I'm just not leaving it in the kiss world in general. There's a few classics for sure. Detroit oh yeah. Black City is amazing. King of the nighttime world's great. It's not a, it's not a kiss song. No, it's a cover it's a cover song. It's not them. God of thunder is fantastic on here though. I'd yep. always liked Paul Stanley's one from the demos where he played it faster and weirder, but this is the definitive version of that. But literally outside of that, not a lot of this does much for me. I mean, there's some there's some god fucking awful great expectations. It's my, one of the worst kiss songs ever. This is you know it's it's terrible to me. Sweet pain doesn't do much for me. Flaming youth is okay, but it's it's trying so hard to be Alice Cooper. It's so obvious that like some of these songs, like you can you can just hear it. You know, when you, when you listen to the album, you can actually pinpoint the songs they're trying to be like and like repeat this like teenage revolution kind of shit. You know, flaming you sets up, you know, this and that. Shout it out loud. We all know the rock and roll night follow up. I didn't care for it much. It see it seems contrived. It doesn't work for me. Yeah. For the most part. Detroit Rock City and God of Thunder make the record. King of the Nighttime World is cool for what it is, too. Outside of that, I am not much Do You Love Me doesn't do much for me. Nothing. Beth is Beth. We all know where that went with that. But it's 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 a step backwards to me. But in the world of being popular, it's a huge step forward for KISS. It's my first Kiss record. I was blown away by Detroit Rock City and King of the Nighttime World and God of Thunder, which just happened to be the three songs I heard that day in that elementary school when we took uh. the record off, you know, the teacher's look and put it back, kind of shit. But yep. and that's that's it for me. I never play this record. I've always found it too laid back, too polished, too too overproduced for Kiss. Um, I, I would give this one a I would give this one a five. I would give it a five. Well, looking at the track listing, obviously side A is the winner here. And um, you got Detroit Rock City, which is a, a classic song, King yes. of the Nighttime World, which I didn't learn until, you know, 10 years ago that it was a cover. I didn't, I never knew. I never, never knew, never cared. Um, God of Thunder written by Paul Stanley and sung by Gene, which I guess bugged Paul because he loved the song so much he wanted to sing it. But yeah, it's in that box set, that big black box. Yeah, set that's that I, yeah, exactly. That's cool. With him, version, with yeah. him, it's cool. It's Paul singing it, but it's just not the same. It's just no, not it's not. It's a, it's a rock and roll song. Yep. Great expectations could have been on Gene Simmons solo album because it's yeah. weird and makes no fucking sense with anything. Flaming Youth is an A song. That's just. You know, you go Flaming Youth, Sweet Pain, Shout Out Loud, Beth. Those four songs are just pop, bubblegum pop garbage in a lot of ways. I mean, I'll sing along with every one of them because, again, this is my childhood right. here. And I've had a lot of years of maturity to sit and process and pontificate upon this album. Whereas when I was however old I was when I obtained this album, well, I, I didn't get into this until after it already came out. So it blew me away i mean it was another kiss album i finally got and i loved it i, I didn't care they could have been you know right yeah yeah they were they were in your world at the time i do yep. like the cover art i think the original cover art was better it was more raunchy they definitely let's I'll, let's go on record and see if you agree with me here i think this is the record where they started is this the original paint. cover art yeah i like that one better yeah but i, yeah. I let's go on I'll see what you think about what i'm about to say i think this is when kiss started to like try to totally 
become commercialized. When I really oh, yeah. let go for it. I think this is the heiress right here on Destroyer. Yep. And it was all mainly because of Beth. I mean, that was the flip side to uh, Detroit Rock City. Yeah, Detroit Rock City. And people were hungry for Kiss. And they're like, what's this other song? And that, I'll, I, if I, oh, every time what, that song comes yeah. on, I what else, what else did it do? Ear. What else did it do? It fucking set Peter Chris up to fucking think he was fucking Elvis Presley. Yeah, and he yeah, he would he didn't write the song on his own, but the way he talks about it, it makes it sound like it was his vision. He, yeah, he know? was like, I'm the next Rod Stewart, man. I'm the next Bob Seeker. You know, I told you I was the talent in this band. It was happening then. Yep, it was this happening then. Ace, this is an album where Ace Freely doesn't play on all of it. You start getting the Alice Cooper band guys in here. Ace yep. couldn't be bothered to show up because he wanted to play cards and all that stuff. So all this stuff when people say Ace Freely's the real rock and roller of this band. If you don't show up to record on your album, it doesn't make you a rock and roller to me. Yeah, if you're if you're that's not rock and roll to me. You're somewhere else being a rock star, not doing your job. You're not you're not uh, following up. You're not being the true rock star. You know. Yeah, show up for your music. Yeah, you wonder but, why later on you're not allowed to play your music because somebody else played it. <laughs> Peter in Peter Chris's defense, he's got the voice that could hang with Rod Stewart. They're very similar, very oh, raspy. He's a great singer, I agree with you. He's a yeah. talented singer, but unfortunately, he just thought he was the shit. Then you know, he did, he did. Um, for me, this record on a good day, it's a six. Uh, now, that, back then, it was a 10, 10, 10, but now right. older years of hearing these songs and some i never want to hear again it's it's a six and that's on uh, some days being completely generous i will say i recently picked this up and you know it doesn't it's a different mix it's a bob ezrin you know pulled out the tapes and fiddly fucked around with the mix yeah. and the mastering it's got a different solo on um flaming youth i think that yeah. ace ace played that they didn't use which when that comes in it's like what the fuck is it? you know it makes it glad i bought the record you know but um it's yeah, it's odd because it's you, you, you. No matter who played it, you used to it a certain way now. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And uh, yeah, this is a cool little acquisition. You know, Walmart when they were um, swinging from uh, Kiss's nuts. But um, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We got Destroyer. That's a big one. And that album, in their in Kiss's mind, this is their pinnacle. I mean, you just the way they talk about this record. This record blew them up to um, yeah, superstardom pantheon proportions and they've always been trying to chase this record but i will say they followed it up with a serious fucking banger and probably one of my favorites rock and roll over 1970 and as i said beginning of this conversation this is my favorite kiss record yep. i think eddie kramer and if kiss knew it or not because i know paul was disappointed with the fucking polish of that shit of destroyer at the time i thank him for making it rawler it's not it's not quote unquote heavy but it's rawler. It has an edge to it again. They're back to, to me, street level for the most part. Even yeah. Though I know they're trying to go superstardom here. Love the artwork. One of my favorite Kiss artwork. Killer. Uh, it's classic. The way they did that is totally neat. This this is, um I do believe this is the first album to start putting the shit in it. Besides the booklet that was in Kiss Alive, the, the tour booklet was inside it. This Stickers. one came thicker of yep. the rock and roll over. So they're starting to get that. The Kiss Army's, you know, rolling now too. Let's not yep. forget about those guys. This yep. fucking record just came in blew me away this was my first kiss record i bought on my own as i said my first full album still blows me away everything about this fucking record i love you know peter chris now he's hot so motherfucking peter chris is gonna get hard luck woman he's gonna piss off fucking paul again because paul wanted to give that to rod or sing it at least he gets baby fucking driver on this motherfucker you know he gets two he's like he's like hey man i just had a big fucking hit with beth so he's in there Motherfucking yeah. Gene Simmons comes to life and Dr. Love calling Dr. Love is fucking he now he's got that now he's the now he's the demon now he's the demon lover he's there Paul Stanley's the sh star of this fucking show though dude fucking I want you to lead off this fucking record one of the greatest fucking tunes ever man ever yeah. I love that song and right into take me that one two punches that's the that's my style of take me I is a hard drive and killer song I'm a I'm a I'm a Paul Stanley's my favorite guy, my favorite songwriter in Kiss, my favorite singer in Kiss. He's the one for me. And like this one, two punch, if I want you and take me, he's just fucking phenomenal. You yeah. know, and then he comes, he still gets Mr. Speed and this motherfucker. Mr. Speed's and, my and, favorite and song love. on this album. I love the riff on Mr. Speed. It's yeah, so Mr. Bluesy. Speed's awesome. Uh, making fun. Love making love is great, but doesn't get played right till Alive too, because unfortunately they put acoustic over this one during some of the parts of it, which yeah. I don't know why they did that. I don't know. Ez Ezrin I, was big into that. He he would he did that a lot on a lot of well, He was gone on this one. This was this yeah. was Kramer again here. 
Well, they must have got it from him because I, I, I heard a thing that it was a big thing for him. You're going to do some of that shit then, I, maybe. I know they recorded the drums in a fucking elevator fucking hatch for this one. He had <laughs> wow. a video. He had a video fucking to see them. I mean, I, I'm looking at the fucking track listing here. I mean, I know it in my head. Hard Luck Woman's a phenomenal song. Should have been a huge fucking hit. Yep. Right? Total Rod Stewart worship. I'll give you that. The original See You in Your Dreams before Simmons redid it on a solo. Love Him and Leave Him. That's, that's, that might be the, the low point, but it's still good. It's just kind of like three minutes later, it's over. It said it said the same thing over. Peter Chris is starting to come into his own because I like Peter Chris songs. I've always had a thing for Peter Chris songs, and Baby Driver's cool to it's me. I know, I know it's fucking silly, and it is, but he he, he kicks ass. He this sings record, his ass off on that fucking song. This record is rawer. It's uglier. It's fucking cooler. This is my this is my favorite Kiss record. I mean, I guess I got to go ten on it. Even yeah, though Love and Leave is not there, I think I'm going to go nine and a half. I think I'm going to stay at nine and a half. I can't give it any Kiss record a perfect score, but I'm going to go nine and a half. It's not a perfect record, but it's as close as Kiss ever got for me. Yep. Yep. This is a 10. I agree. And um, I love the sharpness of the guitar tone. It's just a very bright, uh, but very street level. The, you know, they they got out of the, the weirdness of Destroyer and the the orchestration and to kind of took it back to the roots, but the songs have just, they've matured a lot of songwriters. And, um, again, I agree with you, Peter. He just sings his fucking ass off. He's just, Go, baby, drive <laughs> he screams as like that, like all the air coming through. It's so raspy and, uh, feral sounding. It's so cool. Yeah, He's such great. a great singer. Um, uh, Mr. Speed. I love that riff. I love the way the words fit over the, the groove. It's just a great fucking song. Great song. Yeah, ten for me. That, ten, I think ten. I think Mr. Speed was was a take on Bang a Gong T Rex. Probably I hear a lot of probably. that. Nah, nah, nah. I heard the same kind of riffing as that. Yep. It's probably if, if the truth be known, T Rex had something in Paul's mind when he wrote that one. Yeah, similar swagger for sure to the songs. Um, yeah, nineteen seventy seven, and um, we did also need to note that Destroyer and Rock and Roll Over came out the same year, so. That was yeah, another that, them being very, very productive in the studio and busy before they completely fell off the rails with uh, their members. You know what I mean? But um, <laughs> yeah, we, we go to this one. This was younger, younger me. And I still uh, I'll get to it when we get there. But Love Gun 1977. You want to go first this time? Mix it up. Yeah, I'll go. I mean, um, I love the cover art. There's an atmosphere to it. And um the, this atmosphere somehow makes its way into the production and um almost human is just a very um dark song the bongos in it are a little fucking weird but um, I love it. it's just a dark that's where he's the demon and uh plaster caster i love the feel of that song i i love it it's a great song shock me is ace's first singing appearance yeah, he's finally got enough courage to what he had to sing that one sitting on the ground looking up away from the guys off the glass Yep. He recorded it on his fucking back, singing up. Love Guns, a classic. Uh, Paul wrote that song in his head on a plane flight. He got off the plane and immediately booked a studio, went into the studio and cut the song. That's right. He knew, he knew in his head that this is a banger and it is a banger. And it was in tribute to Sex Pistols, hearing the name Sex Pistols. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right on. It was. Love for Sales, a great song. Tomorrow and Tonight. That song, lyrically, a little too bubblegummy for me. And looking back now the song christine 16 let's let's put this into perspective um kip winger winger put out the song she's only 17 daddy says she's too young but she's old enough for me people shit their pants over oh my god that's so you know yeah. pedophile this and that Too naughty and then you listen to the lyrics to christine 16 which is a year younger and <laughs> You know, he's like lusting over this young girl and he's saying, You're so young and clean and blah blah blah. And I gotta yeah, have you. I gotta I saw have you coming out of school that day. I yeah, knew, I, I knew, knew I knew I got, I got to have you. you. Yeah, I mean, you want to talk about fucking gross, but let's <laughs> let's be honest. Back in these days, I mean you got um Motorhead doing songs about uh jailbait. You got it was a thing in the rock scene. You got the young runaways writing about themselves being jailbait. <laughs> exactly. I mean, the young girls in the groupie scene were apparently a thing. Does it make it good and right? No, it makes it fucking creepy and gross. But um, hooligan, another great it. Peter song. He screams his fucking brains out. On I love it. I, I, I love got the a thirty-five Chevy on a fifty-five frame. It's stupid lyrics, but man, I can't help but just love it. 
I love it. It. Just, it just it just goes, man. Plaster Caster is a favorite. Almost Human. The the Gene songs on this one I really love. Um, then she kissed me. Cover. <sighs> I mean, it highlights Paul's love for that bubblegum pop, which is fine. Um, stole I stole your love is a great song. I mean, this is a good. This is a nine album to me. This is a nine. Uh, then she kissed me. I mean, I'll still pull this album out, listen to it, and love the whole thing. Even the even the cover. Joe yeah. Elliott from Def Leppard's all time favorite album by anybody's Kiss Love Gun. No shit. He's a Kiss Love Gun fanatic. For well, what me, do you think? Yeah. For me, the cover art they tamed it. I love that's my all time favorite Kiss cover art, but they tamed it down. The, the uh, original cover of that the girls' mouths and heads were a lot closer to their cocks and balls. It was really like they, were, they were on the back. They were at the back of the club, the back of the uh, club, and all the girls were up on them, like basically worshiping their cocks. You know that was what it was. And then, you know, <laughs> Bill Coin probably came in and said, "Hey, hey, hey, back off!" You know, you're two feet from the Peters. You know, and Peter Chris was like, "How are you talking to me?" No. <laughs> what did, what, what was that? But I love the songs on this record. Most of them. Well, two of my favorite three Kiss songs of all time are "I Stole Your Love" and "Love Gun." The other being "I Want You." Those are my three favorite Kiss songs of all time. "I Stole Your Love" is my favorite Kiss song ever made. I love it. Guitar is tamed down so much on it though on this record. Um, Katie Segal was dating Gene at this time. She sings the backup on this album. So when you're hearing stuff like "Tomorrow and Tonight," that's her on there with some other girls. Yeah. So she's on there. Peg Bundy, for those that don't know her by name. Going through the record, I saw your love ten. Christine sixteen, cool fun bubblegum seven. Got love for say all. It's like love them and leave them. It's all right. It's a gene thing. Kind of got in, got out. Shock me's phenomenal. It's even better live. That one I'm going to go with a fucking nine. Tomorrow and tonight is a bummer. It's on the yeah. listening league with, with shout it out loud and rock it all night. It just doesn't work. It didn't even work on the live album. We can rock all day. Me. We can roll all yeah, day. Yeah, exactly. God. Love Love Gun's a perfect score. Ten. It's my second favorite song. Hooligans right there too. As dumb as the lyrics are, it just again it, it has a drive to it that I love. Fucking almost human is one of the most underrated Kiss songs. I'm I'm gonna hark this one back to Going Blind and uh and um Lover All I Can again or, or no, I'm sorry um Ladies in Waiting. From Dress to Kill, almost human. I love it. I love the voodoo beats. I wish they'd play it live. I wish they'd play it on the boat or something. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to fucking hear it. And um, Plaster Caster is is fun for what it is. It's bubble gum. I give that one a six. Then she kissed me. It's pretty bad. It's it's, it's really bad. just. You know, let's. I pretty much think it was probably filler. And um, but the record is the record is is really cool for what it is. The timing. This is the best Kiss costumes for me too. The best look they ever had. The best stage show, which is you know when you fold out Kiss Alive too. That's the best Kiss stuff. That if you open that, you got that open there. Can you pull that one open? That's that's the biggest craziest stage show ever. That's the best Kiss stage. I wish they'd have brought that when they came back to the reunion. They said they would. They had parts of it, but they didn't have that. But um. Phenomenal fucking uh, times. There's the best Gene Simmons picture of all time, <laughs> in my opinion. In my opinion. Um, I'll give this album an eight. I would love to give it a higher score, but a couple bad songs bring it down. But the, again, I Still Your Love and Love Gun are two of my favorites, and Almost Human is one of the most underrated tunes they ever did. And I, I, I have a thing for fucking Hooligan. I just love that fucking Great song. song. I agree with you. It's an under that and Almost Human are definitely overlooked classics for sure. I'm very hungry. You're what I'm thinking of. You're only 14. <laughs> I'm for your love. And his mind goes, I'm almost human. <laughs> Guitar is cool. The lead on that with some of the backwards. Yeah, you know, backwards shit is very cool. Very cool. So I, I, I do. I dig that. I wish I, I wish it had a heavier production. And you got the Kiss Love Gun inside the record, too. So more toys you yep. to play with. More toys to play with. And it was followed up with this legendary album. Um, for me, one of the best live albums ever, even though, again, it's not live. And the thing that makes it so unique is side four, side B, is all studio tracks, which who did that back then? I don't really, I don't know. Yeah, like very that. few had the bonus things that were like non-live, especially. Even at a younger age. somewhere else, but it was not like a studio for the most part. Even at a younger age, I knew something was afoot when I'm listening to the backup Live, uh, when they're playing live paul's singing and there's backup singing and you can hear paul's voice in the backup singing yeah while he's singing i'm like how did they do that <laughs> well come, come to find out it's all fucking studio come baby on, Marty, this is kiss. They, they're, they're fucking gods of the universe man they could... well, i was i was i was yeah they could they could shape shift their mouths it's amazing <laughs> but um That's what the ladies again <laughs> this is a 10 and i even love all the let me see 
Yep, I even yep. like all the songs. I like all the even songs. Even the Dave Clark here. Five song originally that was originally that was supposed to be Jailhouse Rock, the last song. But Elvis died when they were making this, so then the last minute they took it off. They were going to put a cover of Jailhouse Rock. And no switched, shit. I don't, I don't know. I guess out of they they said it was out of courtesy to Elvis dying. I would look at it as a nice tribute to him, but they they looked at it a different way. Any way you want it, being a Dave Clark Five, which is one of Gene and Paul's favorite bands, you know, from the back in the day. Um. I'm with you. It's a ten. That that's that the, the insanity of the crowd noise that they they put in there. Yeah, they, yeah. They I mean, it's unreal. It's like a, it's like they're playing to seventy million people at one time. The way that the, the that's got that that's the, this is their first heavy metal record. The yep. sound on this is so heavy. I stole your love is unreal on here. Love gun. I want you is so much heavier. Making love is and in, intense as shit. Detroit Rock City is spot on. God of, God, God of thunder. God of thunder. Yeah. Gene is amazing. like Peter his Bruce voice. Solos. It's not in league with Kiss Alive One, though. It's not yeah. in league with Kiss Alive One, but Shock B guitar solo is phenomenal. Yep. And in side four, when you get what do you get? You get All American Man. You get Rocket in the Rocket USA. in the USA. Larger than life. Larger than life. Rocket Ride is another great ace soon. Yep. He was, you know, he stepped up for a second studio song. And any way you want, it's fine. It's much better than then she. That's a, that's a weird fuck. I love the song, but it's weird. It's like that chanting, any way you want it, and you can have it another day. I mean, hey, I mean, hey. you, can t- you can tell it's a studio. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. It's all right. It's, it's all right. right. <laughs> but, um, any way you want it. And let's it is, not forget the tour book and the kiss tattoos that came inside this one. Yep. And hey, um, still, I still got a whole stack. I got a, I got one a sleeve un, unused to this day. It is also um, worth noting uh, that Bob Kulik plays his ass off on this. Yeah, who, he was everything he, with Ace. He tried out for Kiss before um, after Ace left. I think no, he he tried out for Kiss early on, and they yeah, said you don't look when Ace did. Yep, he didn't. He did. He said you can play your ass off, but you don't look the part. And yet they they circle back around and he plays on a lot of Kiss stuff. He plays on Paul Stanley's solo album, which he plays that plays that amazing lead on Larger Than Life, man. Yep. Oh. But I will say the the version of God of Thunder on this, Gene is so into it when he when they come back in, he's like, oh, he's like his voice is like yeah. breaking I a bit. Am the Lord of the I know what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, he's it's like crazy. fucking really playing up the demon fucking thing, you know. It's so and he, cool. And, he, and he's really intense on Dr. Love on here too. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But um, yeah, I love all of the All American Man, rocking all these songs, man. This is just my childhood right here. I'm holding it in my hand. It's amazing. Love it. And again, another one I just want to listen to when I look at it. It's so good. 10, 10, 10. That's a, special, that's a special record to me. I know I've played it at least 200 times in my life. Yep. And then it gets to the point where the the shit in the band was starting to get a little weird. And um, Bill O'Coin come up with the idea of, you know, you guys don't need to break up and go do it. Just, let's just all do solo albums. And I got to say, right here, I'm about to show, is the best Kiss album ever. And it's not really a Kiss album. This album right. is fucking, if, if you could go to 20, this is a 25 on the rating scale this album to me is pure atmosphere paul stanley has never been better than this i'm sorry the the songwriting on this is so great uh um oh it ends with goodbye such a great song um what what song is it uh love and chains to me is the song oh, the uh, love and chains might be the one i like the least no i like that song too love Hold me hold me touch me hold me touch me is the one i'm like eh. well, you know what i'm gonna go on record and say i i can i can i like it for what it is because that's the side of paul that was always there you know he took the star child the lover and that's part of it and let's be honest these times here this was all in andy gibb was in fucking even what's his name fucking david soul from fucking starsky and hutch was having ballad hits so it was it was meant to be it's very walt disney like it's very you know, you know, it's it, it's 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 very soft, but I mean, it, it's fitting to be on a solo record for him with it. It's it's Paul Stanley. I mean, yep. that's part of Paul Stanley's appeal. But if you go through side one of that record, man, that's a perfect fucking rock oh. and roll five. My God, I so mean, it good. Just keeps move on, ain't quite right. Wouldn't you like to know me? I mean, all that stuff. Fucking bam, man. bam, bam, bam. And it's Jeff Jeff Glixman produced that. Who went on to do like Saxon, Power and the Glory, and things like that. Yep. So and looking at it, had an edge to him. Looking at the lineup here, we got Bob Kulik on lead guitar. You've got a Rich Richie Fontana, who I don't know, uh, Craig 
Cramp on drums, and you've got Carmine Carmine a piece. Yep. On drums on some of the songs. Um a bunch of people I don't know, Eric Nelson. I mean, there's just a, a smorgasbord of, of studio musicians on this album, but the guy that recorded it, he, he there's an atmosphere, man. There's like a, a fog circling around this album, and it's so it's a it's it's mystical sound. This it's like the power pop version of awaken the guardian it, it has a similar feel to me as awaken the guardian you know, awaken the guardian's got that mystical swirl about it this album has that for me too this is a this is a 10 all day long even I mean, though that, that, that purple swirl around his hair I, I see that when i hear this exactly it too, it can, i hear what you're saying Dude, yeah i love this record too i i argue all the time with people that go ace feel the better one this is the record for me this is a, this is the lost kiss album to me i agree totally yep. Tonight You Belong to Me is one of the greatest rock tunes ever recorded by anybody to me. It's perfect. His voice was never, this album is so strong, whether it be the ballad he hold me, all that kind of shit, or yep. if you're love in chains, I, it's, it's good. It's yep. got just enough of a heavy edge when it should, got just enough of a pop edge when it should, got just enough of a fucking mellow edge when it should. He and doesn't take it crazy. He doesn't take it crazy. He, 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 he does he what a good album does. He, yep. he, he, you know, he's got his fucking swoops. It's yep. it's amazing record. I fucking love it. I'm gonna I give it a I'm gonna give it a ten too. Yep. And this is the second best. This is a you know, it may I have its faults, but I love this record. It's the best ace album ever. I mean uh Fraley's Comet, all the ace solo shit. He never got his bearings after this again. I, I don't know. I think yeah, I think this was when he was at his best, like this yep. era, not just here, like we he was coming off a of shock me and rocket ride into this. He was writing his best tunes. I'm not as big on this one as you. Half the record is amazing. Half of it does. New York Groove is fucking awful to me. I can't. I can't stand the song. I can tolerate. I know it's not his song. I I just don't like it. I don't always like his voice on here either. I tell a lot of people it's a running joke to a lot of people. I sometimes consider this a fifth-rate Joe Walsh solo record. Uh, at at times, but stuff like "Rip It Out," "Speeding Back to My Baby," "Wiped Out," those are fucking phenomenal. Snowblind. Snowblind is another one. Yeah, those. That's the. And you know what? Those are the four. I mean, you just named the four for me. You know, I mean, I'm looking at it right here just to make sure I'm not forgetting something. And and I even like what's on your mind. It's a ripping fucking solo yeah, I, in that th- song. That one doesn't do much for me. I'm in need of love. Does nothing for me. I can't. I, I the fractured mirror does nothing for me as a guitar piece. It's it's boring. It's forgettable. I think he was believing his own press then. Ozone is okay, but it's kind of it kind of comes in, kind of goes out. But rip it out is phenomenal. Speeding back to my baby, I love too. Even with the, the backup girl singers on that. You know, and Snowbond, that's a one, two, three punch. You know, I would have yep. been good with that. If you would have gone wiped out fourth, it, it would have been a, a, a deadly thing. But then it, then it just, you know, it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he's got that, <laughs> yeah, 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 voice. I can't stand sometimes. Yeah. For me, he, go ahead. Go, no, go ahead. Go, no, go ahead. For me, I'm just going to give you a number rating for me on this one. I'm trying to be genuine. I'm going to give it a seven. It's it's way better than most people would have thought. I, I still loved Ace as a kid when this came out. I had nothing yeah. against Ace really me too. at the time. It was definitely the second best one. I would give it a seven because the songs that are strong are very strong. And then, unfortunately, you know, four or five of them are just average to me. But the yeah, ones that I are, be- it's like, it's like I, have, I have ones that are really high and ones that are extremely low for me. Yep. I New think I'm a little more forgiving. Out. I'm a little more forgiving of the songs that you dislike. Um, I really like, you know, in hindsight, I had this on eight track as a kid. This I got this I actually have it on eight track upstairs right now. Yeah, yeah. Four um, copies. Wiped out. He really played up the drug, the the space ace drugged out thing. You know, ozone wiped out. They've got kind of a, a drug addled feel to the songs, which I kind of like that. It gives it a little of a psychedelic vibe to it, the way he's singing and the background shit. Very cool. I, I, I give this a solid eight all day long. It's an and, eight. And one thing I want to say too, this is pretty much Anton Figs coming in, you know, as yeah. part of the Kiss world too. Now he yep. he he carries a couple of these tunes too with his drumming. He has some fantastic, you know, beats inside of this and some cool like shuffle to him that work. Yep, he's a uh, the he's the only drummer on this too. Yep, he does all of it. He he's fantastic. And who does whoever doesn't know that he's the David Letterman drummer for years. Yeah, absolutely. So. Yep. Yeah, David Letterman's band were fucking full of badass. Then we've got probably, well, it isn't the biggest disappointment for me, but the most shockingly disappointing album would be this one right here. Yeah. What a, what a fucking narcissistic, over bloated, self-indulgent mess of a record. I mean, Gene is a guy 
that he's got a vaults and vaults of shit that he's written over the years with other people and by himself. He's he's got a very strange way of um when he nails it, he nails it hard. I mean, he does he can write a killer song, but when he's off in left field, man, his shit is just strange and sometimes this doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, um, I agree. I don't know. I think um radioactive uh Radioactive could have been a good kiss song as yeah. a kiss song. I think he takes it to a different range. I think he let some of the disco producing come into some of this stuff, you know, like this and living in sin and even, and you know, like fucking, uh, what's the one that really fucking uh, burning up with fever. I mean, he's yeah. got Donna Summer on that. Yeah. I'll let you go ahead and say what you want. I want to say something. I'll wait till my turn. Hey, Donna Summer's on this, who he was fucking at some point shares on this, who he was at the time with while this was recorded, I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think I've said all I need to say. This is a, a three to me, maybe a two. I I just uh, as a as a kid, as a kid, I bought that. I bought this and Paul's the same day. The first two I bought, my favorite two guys at the time. I put this on. I was scared when it came on. The beginning of Radioactive is spooky as shit. And I was expecting yep. something really crazy to come in, God of Thunderish, I guess. And you're talking a ten year old kid. I was ten when this came out, and um. Radioactive comes in. You're my food. You're my water. You might be the Bitter devil's, devil's daughter. daughter. Yeah. And I was just like, okay. And then, you know, it is the cheese radioactive and whatever. I was like, eh. And then you get burning up with fever and it starts going down the line. If you look at the, if you know, you go into these fucking tunes, which, you know, this is where for me, I know I don't like an album that much because it's hard to remember the fucking, all the titles on it because you're like, you don't care. I don't remember them. Okay, see you tonight. That's a Beatles want to be. It's actually a pretty well written song. Uh, yeah. As a ten year old on a Kiss record, it didn't work to me then. I've learned to appreciate that song more. Tunnel of Love, True Confessions, Go Nowhere, Living in Santa School for the middle part where Cher is on there talking with him. Oh my God, is this Gene Simmons? You know, but yep. it's so stupid. I'm living in sin at the Holiday Inn. Stupid. Parts. You know, Man of a Thousand Faces was a song. You, I can see it now. Gene wrote that on a notebook at Holiday Inn and fucking kept it on. Oh, that's a great title for a song. Unfortunately, there's no song to go with the great title. You know what I'm saying? Mr. Make Believe is okay. Um, see You in Your Dreams Redone is not as good as Rock and Roll Rover's version, which, you yep. know, he, he does a Kiss song. I do have a thing for When You Wish Upon a Star because I know it meant a lot to him. And I can feel the emotion there yeah. a little bit. But this album was a wank off. This was, hey, I know Joe Perry. Hey, I know Bob Seeker. Hey, I know Cher. Hey, I know fucking Greg Allman. Hey, I know blah, blah, blah. Hey, I know blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Well, hey, motherfucker, can you put together a cool record? Because this is the one people expected to be the one. Yep. Came oh, out. yeah. Paul Paul one effortlessly blew, blew him out of the fucking gate. water. Yeah, he blew yeah, him out of the water. This was the one came out of the gate. People were thinking this is going to be the one that sells the most. And we all know Ace had the only hit with New York Groove. But yep. I remember these. I remember these records. They had a big promotion for it. You bought all four of them. You got the bag. They gave you a bag with all four of their sleeves on it. If you bought all four records that day, and as you know, these albums ended up in the tank. I mean, they they shipped oh, them in each. They you know, yeah. They, they over they, they over back, them. back then. It was what you shipped is what you got credit for selling. Yep. But when they started, they allowed people to return these. I used to see these at a place called Dart Drug. Yeah, mine are all cut out. Mine are all cut out. They were 99 cent picture discs everywhere, these fucking records. They did the picture discs. They did a million of those. They did a million of the regular sleeve. They had the posters inside all four. The interlock, the interlocking posters. Yeah, Yeah. interlocking. You know, they wanted all their individual merchandise. They gave them all their color coding schemes. This jeans being the red, of course. Um, This one for me, I'm going two. I'm going two. It's bad. It's fucking bad. I've got people coming. Oh man, you 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 know you need to go back to it, King. You're a musician. You should love this. No, it's bad. Those songs are dull. I try about once every three years, and I just can't even make it through the record, man. Yep, yep. It's and um, dull. and for me, the best singer of Kiss, and I think at its heart, this is a good record. It's just it's a soul record, and I don't really, I'm never really in the mood for soul. And uh, Peter Chris's album. This is a soul record. He doesn't do any rock on here. It's all very much his roots, you know. Um, I really don't have a lot to say about this album other than I don't like it. I've listened to it within the last couple of years. And um, again, he even his voice seems a little cleaned up on this. I, I like the rat. Oop, shit's about to hit hit the ground here. Um, <laughs> You're just going to wreck. <laughs> um, <laughs> It was funny. I, I like him. I like that 
when you lifted that record up, your, your light put a halo over him like he was an angel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, um, I don't. Um, I like Peter when he's singing. He's just letting it all go, you know, like really screaming and retching his guts out. When he's Bob Seger rocking out. Kind yeah, of this is very out. this is very subdued. He's singing. It's very polished. The album sounds good. A lot of piano on this. Like I said, it's a soul record. I give it a two. It's I can't give it a one because it isn't garbage. It's just not for me. E- not even your copies are cut out, right? The corners it cut, is. right? Oh yeah, Mo- all these are cut out. Yeah, Every single one. The way it comes. Now let, yep. me re- let me see if I got my. I'm trying to remember my Kiss trivia. Now on the back of those, all the Kiss solo records, they all thank the other guys in the band. Was Peter the only one that added somebody to his? Look at yeah, back. yeah, Michael Ben Venga. Yeah, and the other three is just to like who the other three guys in the band. He's he, the only he, one thanked, he thanked he thanked Ace first. They were buddies in the band. But I'm it saying, was, but but like if you look at Paul's and Gene and Ace's, it just says to the other guys, right? Yep. There's no but extra names on theirs, right? Yep. Yep. But Peter's has an extra name, and that's the one you just named off. Yep. Okay, I'm just making sure my kiss trivia is still correct in 2022. Who so is that is. fucking who is that fucking guy? You know? I don't have no idea. But I'll tell you right now. I like this better than Gene's album for the simple fact that I love the song. You matter to me, and that's why you still matter to me, and that's the only reason I need. I hear it singing the whole song with you. I love that <laughs> song. It's great. I'm Gonna Love You is not bad. It's a little bit rocking, but it's more like 70s boat yacht rocking. You know, tossing yep. and turning is a throwaway. And what's funny, when I see them on Dynasty Tour, and they all get to do one song from the solo albums before they dumped them. He had to do Tossing and Turning, which wasn't even one of his songs. They wouldn't even allow him to do one of his songs live on stage. Because I was the guy on Kiss Dynasty. I was lucky. I saw him pretty early in the tour where Gene did Radioactive, Paul did Move On, Ace did New York Groove, and he did Tossing and Turning. But it was so bad that they wouldn't even let him pick one of his own solo songs. They had to do the cover song. Uh, Don't You Let Me Down, No Good, Kind of Papa, Sugar Papa Likes, Nowhere, Easy Thing, Rock Me Baby, Kiss the girl goodbye i mean just the whole side too i can't stop the rain isn't bad for what it is I, i'm with you it's soul it's some there's some rhythm and blues in there there's some yeah. there's just some there's just some romantic shit to it too you know some forgotten era as a kid of fucking 10 i was like what is this fucking garbage shit? yeah i, I know like me too as i got older I, I didn't mind it i always liked you matter to me i gotta be honest i just love the melody it seemed like you know brady bunch theme in some ways whatever but i like that song I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give this record uh, a three three point five. Right on me. Uh, um, he, he didn't a, show anything drum wise. I don't even think he played drums on much of it. Um, Ash Ash uh, agrees with you. He thinks it's better than Jeans. Um, it is uh, better than Jeans. Ash, I agree. For Ian sure. uh, Blanton says that uh, that guy was in the band he was in before Kiss. So okay, Thank that's you, who that Ian. is. Thanks a lot. Yeah, he's the um, only guy that got thanked uh, up on the top. You know, everybody else is in the smaller thanks list. Well, here we but, go. Yeah, so there you go. So that's that's my order. Who Ash says he was Peter's friend who died, but they played in a band together and promised that they would dedicate their albums. Oh, to that's cool. I, I can respect that. Then. I can hey, totally respect again, that. Ash. I did not know that. Uh, believe in their own hype. Yes. Um, too many ballads. Yes. Uh, keep the kiss ball rolling. Yes. And uh, up next, another what? one. Yeah, but before you go to the next one, don't forget they were all this. They were on top of the world here. They were the biggest thing since fucking sliced bread. Kiss yep. meets the Phantom was seventy eight, which oh, were terrible. You know, I I was right there Hall- Halloween watching that <laughs> motherfucker though. I was in love with them. HBO's first yep. concert they ever put on HBO was Kiss from Japan that they had bought from a concert a year earlier. They put they put it out there. You know, so Kiss was everywhere. The pinball machine was out there. The lunch boxes were out there. I now got the lunch box sitting right up there. <laughs> yeah, I got mine. Yep. Somewhere behind me. Um, the, opposite, the Kiss merchandise wheel is now rolling. So Kiss is no longer just a band. They're a corporation. They're a fucking entity. They're a brand. This is when yep. it all started. And, they, you know, and it can't stop now because, you know, they got the comic books. They got the, the Kiss Army. It's a fucking wheel. So as you said early on, when they first started, if you want to make it, you got to fucking stay out there. Well, if you want to stay on top, now you got to keep rolling. Yep. And when they're having conflicts, only what, four years as a band, really, since they all were together, 74, late 73, maybe. They, it, it hasn't been that long to start falling apart like this. But when you're the biggest band in the world and you're hiding behind makeup, and everywhere you go, you got to fucking hide your face and everybody wants to know you because you're kissed. You're this strange entity. It's it's hard for anybody to do that. I, I don't defend egos of any kind, but I could imagine this was a whole nother fucking level, especially in the 70s, because it wasn't yep. it wasn't happening every day then. Nope. And um, oh, fuck, was I going to say? 
I don't know. It doesn't matter. Um, oh, yeah. I watched some documentary where they said that, or Paul, it was Paul's book. He would go up and ask the merch guy, how are we doing? And find out they're doing like a million dollar merch sales in their shows during oh, this yeah. time. And he's starting to wonder, why isn't this money trickling down to the band? So there's, you know, when you have such a humongous entity rolling down the road that's making so much money, you got a lot of fingers in the pot that are starting to siphon that money. Oh, they're not going to miss this hundred thou. They're not going to miss yeah, this. Go, yep. Use the go, use the good fellows quote. You know, yep. someone, people are skimming off the people that are skimming that off the people that are skimming, you know? <laughs> exactly. And it's, um, that's the price of success, I suppose, but I guess it's a good problem to have, but I mean, he, they, I mean, he didn't get his, he didn't get his fucking face buried in Lisa Hartman. So. <laughs> he, did all, <laughs> he did all right. <laughs> he did all right. Yeah. You can make up for it. Yeah. yeah I mean, um, he's, not, he's not like, he's not still a millionaire. <laughs> no. Next up for me, 1979. I'm going to jump in on this first, King, if you don't mind. No, please. This this one right here. Everybody, this is a much maligned disco album for Kiss. Can I stop and you one second? You, you did have double platinum up in the air for a minute, though. I did. I didn't know if we, it was a best of. It's kind of a cool best of. Um, wanna, there's different there, is one, there is one thing about that record that stands out. If you Do you, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, not offhand. They had... They had um, they had uh what's his name? God damn it's Delaney. Sean Delaney came in and remixed a lot of those tunes. He made a disco version of Strutter. Strutter 78 is on. Oh that. yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yep. If you notice when you play that record, they have bad edits. They have parts from other songs going into other songs. It was really just something they literally just said, here, go in here and have fun with this. And they threw it out there. But because if you if people listen to that version of those songs, a lot of that shit's edited down. Rock bottom is all fucked up. It's just the intro into something else. Yeah, it is. Yep. So that's that's an odd that's an oddity, and that kind of shows you that nobody knew what was going on. And let's not forget their manager at the time, Bill Coin, right now, and the Casablanca owner. They were they were bad cokeheads. They were bad Studio Fifty Four, and they had Village people and Donna Summer and all that shit going on too. And it's really so. too bad because the Coin really, you know, he's he put it he put it out on the line for Kiss, and even um, Bill's partner, his boyfriend, he um, he helped Kiss like do the stage choreograph choreography stuff which they still do to this day they still do the same oh, yeah. you know, moves and shit that's all that was all uh bill of coins partner that helped them like why don't you guys do this and it'll make it look like a more composed thing and they you know they thought Absolutely. they felt they felt goofy doing it up first but then they saw this the crowd but, reaction but now but now we're but now what i'm getting to before you take off on your dynasty binge is disco is shit hot man it is, Fuck yeah, it is. And, and, and bill of coin knows it yep absolutely and to be honest, the thing that shines on this album for me is the vocal harmonies. Oh my God. The way they're singing together, it's like angelic, like the woo type shit in the background. I mean, you got to. Kind of like you were on it, Marty. Were you part of that? Were you there? Well, you know, you know, they, they called and, you know, <laughs> their people got with my people and, you know. Dirty living. <laughs> <living. laughs> I, did, I did it for a pair of Hartman panties, you know. There you um, go. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I absolutely I love this record I think the 2000 man the Rolling Stones cover that Ace brought to the table is out of place on this record that I mean even on the unplugged thing when he came back that's the song he played he didn't play shock me they didn't do he tried to play shock me he couldn't play shock me yeah that's can... the story behind that was he couldn't play it anymore Correctly. x-ray eyes i love that song great song magic touch i really like the gene songs on this one to be honest i even like um charisma is a great song um where it was on sure my body or my touch. The, the 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 best paul song on here sure knows something you know that might have a, a disco jangle to it but it's a great song when that chorus yeah. kicks in it's heavy it's a heavy, nah, 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 nah. it's so the good. The biggest miss Kiss single of all time. When I was made for love, when you took off huge, they should have followed up with that. Sure knows something is one of the best Kiss songs ever written. It's a great fucking song, man. It's perfect. That, you talk about your vocals in the middle. Uh, oh. uh, Guys, uh, if anybody that like is a Kiss fan and poo poos this record, go back and just focus on the vocal harmonies. It's that, that, it's fucking that, that great. Record blow, that record fucking blows Destroyer away. It does. It totally does. It, uh, well, here, that's my was, son's that's my son's favorite kiss album. And what's your rating on that one, Marty? Oh god. I mean, I got to give it an 8. It's an 8 for me. Yeah. I mean, even I was made for loving you is cheesy as fuck, but it's still a well-written it. song. It's a good song. song and for, I don't know. For me, it would have been a perfect 10 had they not put on 2000 man, which is garbage. That's, that is that is out of place. I don't like yeah. it. I don't like Ace's voice. 
Ace is hacking through that fucking thing. I do not like it at all. What I love about this fucking record is what you just said. Kiss is finally getting those melodies. The pop sensibility is taking over for better or for worse. Some people don't care about that. I do. I was made for loving you. I was instantly hooked. I loved it. It was a fucking perfect song. 2000 man was stupid to go second. Stupid. Stupid. Should have put that buried next to the end of the album. That's okay. Mike's beautiful recovery. Sure knows something. Dirty living. Phenomenal. Peter Chris song. I yep. love it. It's got Good a disco song. fucking edge, but it's fucking still got, it's got enough rock edge to it to work for the times. Mm. That production is cool. And I don't care what anybody li- reading or listening to us right now. Bands had a lot of disco jobs in it into the eighties. So you just go listen to some early merciful fate. There's some disco fucking beats in there. Whether you want to know <laughs> or not, Kim Rose was playing disco beats. It's yeah. in there. Judas Priest had them too. Before yeah. that, which is probably where Kim Rose got them from. <laughs> they didn't have the electronic going at the same time. They didn't right. have the beats, okay? Side 2, Charisma, phenomenal. Magic Touch, beautiful. Paul Stanley, Great fucking song. phenomenal track. X-Ray Eyes, fucking beautiful. Gene Simmons is yeah. completely kick-ass on it. Yep. And then the, the, the coolest thing about it was you get Freely's, some of his best stuff. Save Your Love is one of my favorite Ace songs of all time. Aaron for the win. Devil there Eyes. That, that's Devil the Eyes. one. That's yep. true. He gets it. Yep. And then Hard Times is good, too. If you want to take him out there to that, like, hey, I'm still street, guys. Hey, yak, yak. Ace is here. I'm cool with that. But, you know, I'm a 2,000 man. Yeah, 2,000. It did nothing for me. Yeah, I'll go 9.5 on this album. I like it that much. I love this record. Uh, even, the, even the fucking disco 12-inch of I Was Made For Loving You that runs, like, fucking nine minutes long. I don't know if you've ever heard that. Or I've never heard that. it. Never Dirty heard Living it. on the B-side. They extend them both to these real long fucking things hard little 12 12 inch to find at a good price but i found mine at a goodwill or some kind of thrift store shit 30 years ago for like two bucks and colored in and the, the the record was fine but the middle sleeve some kid had got a hold of it crayola it but anyway I, <laughs> I love this record i love the look i love the album cover i love the color of it there was a lot of you know problems behind the scenes this is the first tour i saw them on i saw them uh at the Capitol Center, that video goes around that's been out for Largo for years. Yep. I was there, my first concert. Like oh, I said nice. earlier to you, if I could get up, I'd go to it. I still have the sponge that fucking uh, <laughs> I caught out of that disco ball at the end. I have that. I had my first t shirt, it was eight dollars that night. My mom took me, me and my buddy Dan. We had a blast. I mean, it was fucking that was I was 11 years old, and this kiss was great. This was the first studio album by Kiss that I actually bought. That came out when I was into Kiss because by the time I was into Kiss, Love Gun I think was actually uh, was out and Alive Two was just about to be out, and then came the solo albums and Double Platinum. But as a brand new Kiss album, this was the first one, and I bought it at Giant Music. It came with the big poster of them inside of it, you know, the real big poster of them with, with the, the the black, uh, the, uh, yeah, the black um, uh, shirts and then the, the fucking um, the insane asylum fucking things yeah. too, yeah, you know, the, the, the yeah, the straight jackets. I love this fucking record. I play it all the time. I'm with my son. It's a great fuck. It's a it's great, a great album. Great album. It's great. Well, that brings us up to which I know is another kind. Of, if I'm mistaken, a favorite of yours is it not? Kiss on oh, Mask. I love this. This is this is a man. This one I might be a nine point seven five. This one in Rock and Roll Over go at it all the time. Believe it or not, this is a weird love, album. But man, there's some great songs on it. But I, I, I'm a, yeah, I love the album cover. It's so great. I love how it says. I think they stink and they just make yeah. fun of the whole thing. And we, let's we also got to say Anton Fig was the drummer minus on Dirty Living on Dynasty from the solo Ace album, and he's back again here. Peter's actually out of the fucking band yeah. at this fucking point. He just yep. you know they're trying to figure out the contracts and one guy's out. What? How do we get paid the same? Blah blah blah. They're t- putting this out there. I remember buying this. This is night. What, what year is this? 1980. The beginning. This of is 80. 1981. No, wait. I'm sorry. 1980. It's 1980, right? Because I remember buying that at Giant Music. This came out. Yeah, this record came out May 20th, 1980, and I definitely got it the weekend it came out. Had a poster in it again. Yep. For me, of that right there. That was the poster. That's the poster. Yep. For me, the Ace songs are fucking treacherously bad they're terrible oh torpedo girls fucking oh my terrible. god two sides of the coin choose one uh, a torpedo uh. girl one thing i gotta say before i go forward if you listen to that sample where it's supposed to go band battle station torpedoes man battle station torpedoes the cut is so bad on man <laughs> that you if you put it on it, 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 the m's not there in the pronunciation it goes and battle station it, it doesn't even say man it's yeah. just and it, they cut it so bad. It's like nobody gave a fuck, you know, at this time. This is all Vinnie Poncha stuff, if I remember right. 
I, I'm not a, I, I can't go with you on Torpedo Girl. I like the bass line in it. Naked, yeah, Jordan does a great Naked City. Jordan does a lot of great Kiss songs. Naked City is phenomenal for Gene. So, she's so European too. But what makes this record for me, Marty, is the Paul Stanley song. Oh my God, Paul dude. Stanley songs. Oh my God. Um, 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 hold on, hold on. Um, I'm not say nothing. What makes the world go around is unbelievable. Amazing. Tomorrow, my, my, tomorrow. My favorite is easy as it seems. He he uh. says in a book that that was his tribute to the spinners, and I hear the spinners in it. But going through, I'm going to go run through it real quick. Is that you? Is a cover song. It was written by Gerald McMahon. He gave it to them. That's a cover song. I always like that song. Shandy, you're either all in or you're all out. Now, for Ryan Muldoon, if you're I'm still out. out there, here's your fucking Shandy talk. You just can't <laughs> pretend no more. You know, you keep running out of lies. <laughs> Get in here, baby. And that's you, Shandy. <laughs> I, I always liked it. It's bubblegum as shit. It could have oh, been a terrible. solo record. I like yeah. it. It was a huge yeah. hit in Australia. You know, fucking, it was it was big. Talk to me. Fuck you. I can't stand that song. Naked City, phenomenal. Naked City. Song. You know, it's great. Gene voice is great. What makes the world go round? Now you're back to those singing you were talking about on Dynasty. That me melodic edge. Yep. I love melody in my music. It hooks. There's plenty of them here. Tomorrow, yep. right back to it. Even the fucking hand clapping in there. Yep. You know, We're two sides of the coin. Love, I wish two sides of the coin was off there. She's so European, dumb title, but I love the melody. It's a good song, good song. Then the worst, the, the the best song on the album comes up, easy as it seems. That's my favorite. I've been your lover for too many years. I love it. <laughs> I ain't committing no crime. That's my tune. <laughs> And you get fucking and battle station torpedoes. Ugh. Some people down there, as, as the guy just said, like torpedo girl. I like the baseline in it. I just don't like it, you know. And then you're all that I want is a dog. It's it's a dud. It's a dud. And what sucks the most, you were talking about this earlier. That black box demos, you know, the, yep. the, all that yeah. stuff. Yep. The only demo they put from this thing is you're all that I want. Yeah. In there, I'm like, where's the fucking easy as it seems demo? I want to hear that. All right. Right. But I love this record. I, I literally would probably get and, and I just named half the record stinks because Ace has three tunes on here. But yeah. I love the other song so much. I want to go nine seven five on it. And that would beat out rock and roll over and make me a liar, what I said earlier. So I'm, gonna go <laughs> nine, I'm gonna say it nine point five for what it is, but guys, right on. I would say of all kiss, this is the record. Those tunes are the ones I play the most. I would give anything to have a full record of just ten Paul Stanley songs from that era. Yep, the gene, yeah, the genes, the gene, the, the Paul and the Gene songs are the, the hit. Good too, right except for you're all that I want. I don't but like for that. me, it's tomorrow and uh, what makes the world go around are the two shining achievements. I love it, absolutely love it. His voice um, is so good. Oh my god, so good. Um, so sure of himself, so sure of his talent and his range. He he can, you could tell he's on top of his game. He's you know years of touring and he knows what he needs to do. Whether it's right or wrong, obviously he did something wrong because it didn't last. It didn't stand the test of time but you know you get older man all moving parts stood still <laughs> or they break yeah, down he was one of the few guys that when you saw him in concert he did the voice though most guys cut corners he every time would go to those fucking and this was the era of the bgs too he yeah. had those he would do some of that fucking barry gibbs stuff you know well i'm uh, i'm at a seven five eight on this i think seven i'm prob probably leaning towards eight i can look past the a songs because the paul songs and the gene songs are so good but i've always liked this record again this is another one that's got a weird atmosphere to it it's got a little bit of a fog about it which is cool gives it a little bit of a mystical charm um yeah, Shandy, I can't hang with you on that one. I just, ugh, that song is... Oh, you, oh come on, don't sing it. Let's get, let's get everybody out there singing it. Don't you have a like, <laughs> crowd microphone? We can all sing it. <laughs> I just can't pretend no more. Oh, I keep no. running out of lies. Come on, you like it. <laughs> Kicking it loose. We both could use the rock. How about the guitar in there? Ding, ding, ding. Okay, I, I get you. You don't have to like it. I, I love it. I get it. It's bubble gum. It is. I, I gotta say, man, this next album. If if this album took off, they would have loved it. They would love it to this day, right? But they went back with Bob Ezrin, who who got them moving. They think it. They they got him. He got them to capture their best material ever with Destroyer. This album is an overlooked classic. I absolutely love 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 this album. Pretty much the whole thing. I mean, yeah, there's some cheesy stuff here and there, but again, there's a mystical atmosphere about this. And this was during a time where Bob Ezrin was phoning it in because he was going the way of Stevie Nicks and uh, yeah. putting all of Columbia up his nose. And um, 
man, just a boy, only you. What a great Gene song. I love that. There's always some odd tempos on this record. Odd tempos and just a weird, weird and, and feel. You, to you might want to mention before you go that you have a new drummer. They do. Eric Carr. This is his first uh, his first album with the band, which I feel Freak bad for out. the guy. I feel bad for the guy because all of a sudden there's a band that's in turmoil, man. There's there's they feel like they're swirling around the bowl. They're they're trying to reclaim past successes and. Um, they're talked into this, um, massive, um, concept album that isn't really a concept album, I guess. Well, it kind of is. There's some other shit on here. There's supposed to be a movie and everything. I think there's supposed to be a movie. Soundtrack to the movie. And, you know, hearing Paul in the book talk about, you know, how they were sniffing their own farts at the time. They thought they had made something amazing. They made all the executives sit down and stare at the stereo and, uh, yeah. you know, get in the right headspace. And when they all looked at each other, like, what the fuck did we just listen to? But, Man, I love this fucking record. Under the Rose, what a great heavy song. Nee, 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 there he goes. Nee, nee. Now Marty's singing. Come on, go ahead. Oh. Under the Rose. I got uh, you back up. Dark Light, it's an eighth song. It's okay. Uh, I can't World, stand that one. World Without Heroes is a great fucking song. The best song on the record, in yep. my opinion. Should have been a big so, Should have been a hit, but Kiss was so not popular. That song should have been a radio hit. It's still a beautiful song. It's yep. wanting. It makes sense. It's it, it's it works on anything in life. Gene is phenomenal performance. I think that did 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 Paul Stanley play the lead on that? I think he might have. He might have. Yeah. The oath, great song. Mister Blackwell. Eh. I is kind of the you know triumphant. Uh, they're trying to go anthemic within yeah. the concept. Shout and, it out loud. Yeah. It's it's not great, but it's man as a whole though. This whole record. I love this record. I love it. This is a this is a ten for me. I'm not gonna lie. Even with its faults, it's so weird and quirky. But when the songs hit, it makes up for the weak points for me. I mean, it's kind of like unmasked in a lot of ways. You know, the good really outweighs the bad, and it's so unique to the rest of their catalog. Um, it's where they're actually trying to be like kind of a prog band in a way, a little yeah. you know, yeah, trying to you know stretch well, out their they're, feelers. They're definitely going for the Pink Floyd, the Wall, follow the Pink up. Floyd thing, and you know. That's fine. I, I think they, after this, they went back into a, a, a they wanted to be Kiss again. And um, so I, the the creative experimentation didn't really work out. It would have been interesting to see how this would have progressed if they would have continued on with this for another album. Maybe get their feet under them a little bit better because you've got some really cool, mystical, atypical Kiss songs that are amazing up against some traditional Kiss songs, you know kind of worked into the feel and it's yeah, I think and it, some of the traditional kiss songs got turned into medieval yeah you know, storytelling in there like dark light was don't run you know blah, blah, yeah blah. so yeah that, that's where i stand on this one what well, do you think for me the times were changing yep 1981 was coming in fucking uh long hair was out short hair was in they all cut their hair short paul put the headband on it was odd seeing gene without the fucking stuff and the ball on top was weird um yeah, I bought this album at Sam Goody when it came out, and, I, and literally the guy that when I bought it was with his other people working there. Look, somebody's buying Kiss the Elder. They were making fun of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was a Kiss was a joke by then. You did not. They had no support, none. I remember I had just gotten a stereo for Christmas, the Christmas before. I took it home. It was in a corner of my living room. I put it on, and you know it fucking worked its way up to the oath. And I thought it was fucking heavy as shit. I was like, I was like, man, the, the production was good. The drums were crisp. It was you know, Eric Carr was new. He was introduced on Kids or People Two before yep. this. Yeah, 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 I saw yeah, that. I, I saw that episode. Yeah, me too. I, I sat up, you know, <laughs> waiting for that. So they kicked in. I mean, I loved, I loved the oath. You know, the little fanfare. Doo, 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 doo. And yep. whatever. I don't know. I was like waiting for the next song. Um, I'm trying to remember how the record ran the first time because I know they've switched it through the years, but I'll just go down the songs. Just the boy is okay for me. Does it? It's, I don't love it. It's it's odd. It's you know his Paul is he's uh, he's think he's singing opera. I got meatloaf out of it. I got he was he was like he was singing that falsetto voice, which was weird. Yeah, Ezra, I, got, Ezra I got meatloaf out of it. I got this almost um, I don't want to say embarrassing, but this just oddity to it. I didn't dislike it. I didn't love it. I was just like sitting here going, what the hell am I listening to? And I wasn't even on the, on the panel. Uh, Dark Light, I couldn't stand from the get-go. Ace's voice is awful. I can't stand the song. Can't stand the lead. Any of that stuff. The fucking the little funky beat behind the solo. No. Only You is cool. 
It's very cool. It has a, almost like a she kind of feel to it. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's just it's 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 drudgery. It's cool. It's unique. I like it. And, it's and, very and heavy. Gene, and Gene sounds really like, good in that range. Really good in that range. Yeah. It's very it's very it's very great. What's what am I looking for? The word Gregorian chanish kind of yep. thing. Under the Rose is fun for what it is. It's um it doesn't really sound like a rock song to me as much. It's I almost hear Queen. Something like yeah, that, you know. Totally queen. Like that, yeah, which yeah. I'm not which I'm not knocking it. I'm 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 going by my review as a kid on the first list and not fucking 42 years later here now. Okay. A world without heroes came on and it blew me away. Now I'd already I'd already uh knew they were coming on solid gold that weekend with Kiss, you know, their new hit World Without Heroes, blah 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 blah. Oh Ryan, you're late, you didn't even know for Shandy talk. Don't come in on headband talk. Go sit in the corner, motherfucker. Go sit with these <laughs> really Go over there. The goddamn corner. Anyway, uh, "A World Without Heroes" is a, is one of my favorite songs. A big missed opportunity for a beautiful single. It had well, that was on. a single. That was a single. They had I'm a saying, but it would have been a big hit if Kiss wasn't a bad word at the time. Yeah, it yeah. got played. It was that good. Mr. Blackwell does nothing for me. It's a throwaway. Nah. Escape from the Islands just an instrumental thing. Doesn't do anything for me. Odyssey. It's got to be the weirdest thing on there, man. Yeah, the <laughs> yeah. Odyssey. It's just, it was weird. It was just weird. And I was like, what the hell? It reminded me of Rocky Horror Picture Show when I first heard right, it. Right, right. Okay. Um, fucking, what I, What did I forget? I, um, and I, I, you know, it's good. Doon, doon. Yeah. Then they came on Fridays and played The Oath and I and World Without Heroes on there. And yep. that was fucking, that was cool. Um, as a kid, it weirded me out. I still love Kiss, so I had to accept it for what it was as a Kiss album. I thought it was a, it was not in league with Unmasked. Um, some of the songs were great. As I got older, I appreciate it more. I still don't think it's great, great, but I do always have liked it, liked it. I would give it a seven, for as I think it's kind of neat for what it is. I think a couple songs, Dark Light is, again, it's like New York Groove or 2000 Man. It's just yeah. bad. The instrumental is cool. I do like I do like the instrumental. It's simple but cool. It rocks. Yeah, you know. some of it works, some of it doesn't. I also think maybe the way they redid it later for the CD years later, where they kind of put it back in order because I think it was running out of order and it didn't really fit. I had no idea what the storyline was. I yeah. just remember that the kid from Meatballs was supposed to be playing the you know in the movie. That's <laughs> it was, so it was. It was Chris Makepeace was supposed to play him. That came and went. I remember seeing one commercial for it on my local channel, and and it came and went. Nobody nobody bought that. Yes, Odyssey was written by somebody else. It was like, I think it was like a religious dude that had something to do with that. Mm. What he's saying there, it definitely was. But um, yeah, I'll give it a I'll give it a seven. It's not oh, a strong this is, seven, this is, a song Ryan, you might be right. Yeah, yeah. Lou Reed did write a song with him too. Yeah, and, and it doesn't sound out of place as oddity as this fucking thing is. Yeah. Right. No, I don't know why I always connect to that album so much, but I love it. I still to this day. It's a good I mean, road trip. Record. I mean, I'm 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 there, but I'm not there there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I still think they should have. It's too late now, but they should have fucking went out and did a did it later on when they did everything else under the sun, the conventions, and we're gonna play this and that and go deep. They should have done a kiss the elder and made the castle and you know yeah. and fucking just went and did it. But they're just so embarrassed by it. And when they play the stuff live on the boat or I see it on YouTube, it's not bad. I mean, it's, I mean, the oath is one of their heaviest things. It's heavy metal. It could have been on creatures of the fucking night. Yeah. You know I mean? It's heavy metal, whether they yep. want to admit it or not. Speaking of which we're going into 1983. No, oh, wait, 1982, one year after music from the elder, this monster creatures what, of the night. Do you speak of kiss killers before that, which came before that? I don't own that. I've always tried to. I try to buy it now, and it, they're not giving that fucker away. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm not. A, I'm not about to spend a whole well, bunch had, of money. It had new songs, songs on it, which were four more in the more hard oh, rock. Four more. Yeah. It was. It was. It was a, a overseas release, and they basically it was a greatest hits, kind of trying to get people back, like you know, with some of the songs from the '70s, and they put the four new tunes. You know, people liked liked it. Partners in Crime. I'm a Legend Tonight. Things like that. It was good. It was definitely a step in the right direction. It seemed like kind of like your outtakes of maybe the Paul Sessions from his solo record or even like side four of Kiss Alive 2 kind of stuff. Yeah. But they, they knew quickly, we got to make a fucking move. If this is it, we're done. You know, yep. if not, Kiss was literally the laughing stock of the industry. I remember even being as a 12, 13-year-old kid on Elder. I mean, Sam Goody, you were a fucking, you were a dork. If you thought <laughs> was you were. So I got the Kiss Killers when it came out. Luckily, it was on import. I think I paid like ten ninety nine, which was outrageous at the time. Yeah. But um, that was the start in the right direction. And then came Creatures of the Night. Now, before Creatures of the Night was even played on the record for me, I watched the video for I Love It Loud came on. Yeah. I thought the drum sounded like a tank. 
I yeah. thought the song. I personally thought. Here, now here we go with this record. I thought the song stunk. I could not stand it. I was like, they had the video. They were all at the eyes and stuff. I was just like, ah, loud one. It just didn't go nowhere. And I was like, oh, it's that monotone fucking going nowhere. But the drums were huge. Gene yeah. sounded good, but the song. You recorded was- them in an airplane hangar. I, I'm kind of with Paul Stanley when he says that, that he hates playing that song. It's so boring. I think it's boring, too. To listen to, to have played on it, does nothing for me. Now, to run through the fucking record with you, um, I always go at it with people with this one. I think this is the most overrated Kiss record next to Destroyer. Really? Yes, I do. Oh, my I God. I, I'm gonna, I know. We're going to go at it. And that's good. It's time for a duke it out. Well, I'm Preaching not going to duke it out with you. I get night, it, but... The opening tune. Phenomenal fucking Great. vicious the fucking passions back the edge is back the roughness back michael james jackson producing everything sounds good paul is fucking energetic he's using that fucking good powerful voice of of fucking um the elder but in a more heavy rock heavy metal fashion yep. phenomenal okay and we don't know if any vincent's aboard i knew it was an ace playing on us you could tell it was somebody else yeah you didn't know i'm still a kid i'm 14 now i'm, yep. I'm guessing but i knew it was somebody different saint and center came on eh. Didn't do much for me. A big step down from Creatures. I was like, well, okay. All right. Creatures song, I would give a 10. That song, give a 4. Okay? That, I really that, like Gene's performance on He's got He right, sounds right, great on hey, that song. Yeah. You see? I'm a sinner. The deuces are wild. It just you know, made yeah. up. Da, 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 da. I didn't, didn't do a lot. <laughs> I'll be honest. Keep Me Coming was back in the right direction. Though. Yeah, I like that. I liked, the, I liked Eric's drums on that. Ooh, yeah. That one was cool. Paul sounded good. It was it was Kiss. That was Keep Me simple. Coming chorus is almost Led Zeppelin-y, the way it, it yeah, pulses I hear a, lot a little of Zeppelin. bit. I agree with you yeah. on that. Total Zeppelin. Rock and roll hell. Again yeah. with the monotone. Get me out of this rock and roll hell. I yeah. need to get away. I just felt like the whole time my head was doing this, and it didn't do, maybe me make me want to do this. It didn't make me want to headbang. Yeah. It didn't do a lot for me. It, it, was, it was a tame C. Gene's voice sounded fine. The drum sounded great. The guitars had a nice bite. The song itself did nothing. Then you get to fucking what should have been to me the second song. I mean, the the last the last I would have put this the last song on the record. Uh, me and um me and uh my buddy James Danza were talking about this one. He thought it should be the second song. I thought it was too epic to be a second song, but it should have been the last song on the record to me. Ah. Danger, phenomenal, good song. This is phenomenal. This has yep. got intricacy of of stuff from the elder, but it's it's cool. It's just it, I love it. That that song's a ten for me. You already heard what I say about it. I love it loud. If you want me to give it a number, I'd give it a three. And for I a still ballad, love, still love you is a good fucking song. I love I still love you. It's a good I song. Love it. I love Paul puts his heart and soul into it. It works completely. Even live, he sings his ass yes. off. Oh, it was live. one of the best yep. songs of the '80s non makeup era. When I saw him back in those days, they were phenomenal. Eric Carr's high time work on that. It works. Yep. The lead playing on that is phenomenal. It's great. If I had to pick a Gene song on this one, I, I like the most. It would be Killer yep. because I like. It's got a little bit of a of a, of a quirkiness to it. Do Killer, do Killer. Do, do. I like that. I would give that one a six today. I might have given it less before or more at other times. War Machine is a heavy enough riff. Unfortunately, it's a boring. It just keeps the, it's like it's in a loop. When they play it on these tours now, I still see them. It's like, okay. It's just, it's like smoke on the water. I mean, I just don't need to hear it. Cole wrote with Brian Adams. Brian, Brian Adams did a couple tunes for sure. Yep. Yep. Um, To give this record a number tonight. I mean, I love Creatures. I love um, Danger, and I love I Still Love You are phenomenal songs. Keep Me Coming is a step down. Everything else is under that. I, I, I'll be, I'll give it a six. I would, I want to get, it's a, it's a, it's, it's more towards a 5.5, but it's a six for me. A lot of people think this is the best Kiss album, and they say it's their heavy. It's song. not the I, best I, I don't, album. I don't think it's the heaviest record just because the drums are so heavy. I don't, I just don't think it's, it's good. It's a good record. It's what they needed at the time. It definitely pushed them in the right direction. But I just don't think it's as good as it could have been. It really amazes me how much space the drum sound eats up that they got it to work in this mix, to be honest. I mean, right. you know, you know how when you start messing with frequencies, you bump up the bass drum or the bass guitar a little bit, it fucks up the whole mix. Or you do this. I mean, it's just amazing. It's someone who knew what they were doing, because this is a beast of a sounding album i mean they came out of the gate 
getting spanked hard on the elder. They're like, fuck it. We're going to write a balls to the wall kiss record. And that to me with the gene, like I love it loud and war- I love it loud in particular that I see why that was a single because it's pure kiss. It's simple. It's got a push to it. Is it great kiss? It isn't. It's anthemic. Them trying to, you know, play to the, the, the nosebleed seats, get everybody involved type of fucking song, pump your fists in the air. But for me, this album is all about Paul. The Paul songs are the best songs on here. I agree. That's, that's what I'm saying. I do. Even though Gene's songs might not be expertly written or great songs. I really, I just love Gene's voice and he sings. he's just, he has a good tone. And I think he, his performance is pretty spot on on this record. Not that I don't necessarily love all of his songs, but they're passable, decent, good. I, I mean, I'm 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 seven point five on this record. Um, yeah, you're not much. You're not much higher than me. No, but you know, seven point five is a good number because it's it's not a bad album and it's a good album. I think the album that came after it's better. Me too. Uh, um, but this is this is I think um, Kiss trying to right the ship. You know, it was it was listing a little bit, and they're trying to. They've been bailing it they out, were, and they, they, were still, they were they were getting back on thing. They took out Motley Crue and the Plasmatics for this tour. Um, they played up. They were playing about the six thousand seat, you know, smaller. Uh, I don't want to call them arenas. Like it would be like the college basketball rooms more so than the arenas. I mean, they weren't. They didn't come through at all on on Mass. They didn't come through at all on the Elder. They tried to get back on the road for this one. They played in down Richmond. I didn't go, but I think it was like forty two hundred people showed up for it. So they were. They were they weren't they weren't back yet, but it was people no. were happy to see them going. But at this point, as you know, we're getting ready to go to it. The makeup was really holding them back now. They were like they were like that stupid band kiss from the 70s now. Yep, yep, exactly. Ian, um, yeah, Vinny Vincent was on here. This is his first album on here. Yes. He absolutely. may have co-wrote a couple songs on this too. I don't absolutely know he did. Sure. He put in a lot of riffing, and you could tell there was some new styling to the kiss songs, and he didn't do a bad job for the most part. No, you know, I mean. You know, I, I, I'm not a Vinnie Vincent guy, to, you know, but, you know, he, he definitely deserves something because he did. But he was part of it for better or for yep. worse. Next up, 1983, one year later, we've got, you know, you know, keep in mind. Even with the touring cycle, even though Kiss was not filling stadiums anymore, they're still trying to be productive, which, you know, hats off. They're not giving up. And um, Paul is really trying to keep things going on this stuff. And um, we got 1983's Lick It Up. I think they lick it up was probably the worst song to make the single. Cause it's really a, a simple fucking song. It's like, it's a simple, the lyrics are stupid. The vocal harmonies are very painfully uh, are, uh, they follow the riff. I don't know. It to me is not a great song, but um, all hell's breaking loose is a much better. It was a second single off the second yes, video. They did. And it was a good, that's a good song. It's a good song. Um, Even the little, the little uh, street, little, you know, jive to them. Yeah, Street yeah. comes up to me one day. I'm not a mile. Hey, business. man. Yeah. yeah hey, what be this? What be that? Yeah. That was a little bit. That was a little bit off off kilt for a moment there. I am cool. I am the breeze. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've got Exciter Killer song. Not for the innocence. A great song. Um, Young and wasted. Fun song. Good energy and drive to that one. Give me more. Good Paul song. That's a Paul song. Yeah. Um, That's a Hell's- speed metal song almost. Yeah. Hell Hell's breaking loose. A million to one. That's an obvious Paul song. Ab- oh, yeah, ob- that's obvious. That's Haunted right. Melodies obvious. with a nice romantic touch to it. If it's like a glove is a good song. Dance all over your face. Super stupid lyrics. Um, on the eighth day, God created rock and roll. I like this album a lot. It's a good car. It's another good car album. There's a lot of piss and vinegar on this. There's power. I mean, this, this is the album Eric Carr wanted to be. He wanted the elder to be a rock album. He didn't get that, but he got to shine on this. They really yes, beefed up his did. drum sound, and this is right where he needs to be right here. This is, I think, the I LP agree. one. And Vinny, we all, we've all heard the Vinny Vincent Invasion shit where the solos are just fucking unholy ridiculous. Um, he really toned it down a lot for Kiss, but still, he kept it in the Kiss vein, which is cool. You know, he, could, he swallowed a lot of ego, which is kind of probably a funny thing to say about Vinny Vincent, but, I mean, a guy that's that big of a shredder, really has to swallow a lot of ego to be in here because they you know the next album they picked up a shredder guy and it just didn't fit for kiss but um vinny dumbed it down and um good album solid this is an eight this is an eight for me eight for you yep for me one of my favorite kiss records right on 
I like it. I get I, it. I get it. It's solid. It's a solid record. It, I, it's what I wish Creatures of the Night would have been like, just like it. So it had two of them instead of one and a half, which I'll give Creatures of the Half. Exciter, a beautiful 10 lead off track. Another Paul fucking masterpiece coming in there. Him and That's him and Vinny writing that together. Not for the innocent. Gene gets it right this time. The monotone of Creatures is not as bad here. It's much better. It has a, it has more of a drive to it. Michael James Jackson, again, producing. Put, pulled the drums back a little bit, which they should have. I thought it was it was very good. And then um, I like Lick It Up. To me, it's not bad. I like it more than you do, obviously. I think it's simple but effective. Because it's, it's a simple. super simple. It's like a, it gets, a, it gets a in, kiss it gets by out. numbers. No. It's kiss it's by quick, numbers. It's quick fuck. Let's put it that way. Okay. <laughs> right Young and Wasted is phenomenal. It's Great so song. dark. And for the times, I'm that now I'm 15. I'm young and wasted myself. It just fits for me. It's it's fucking phenomenal. Yep. Give me more is fast. Here comes here comes Metallica. Here comes fucking Venom. Yeah. I mean, I know that Kiss wasn't watching those charts, but that the world was getting faster. Cocaine was rolling around. You know what I'm saying? Very fucking good for that one. Side two, all hell's breaking loose. I love it. Great video, fun, fucking cool stuff. I love the gene. Back on underneath, you know, how would you uh, that kind of shit? The new revolution, love that. Yep. Great, that's a great kiss anthem. All hell's breaking loose. A million to one should have been another single. It's a little simple, but the melody's so good. I think it would have been a nice hook on the radio. Yeah. If you didn't push that, I would have. Fits like a glove is Gene, dirty, down and dirty. It's good, it works good. I saw this tour, except open balls to the walls, kiss lick it up. I saw the Baltimore Civic Center was pretty much full. And they kicked ass, and this was that was a fucking really good one that night. It had a great vibe live. Then you go to fucking uh, dance all over your face. Now you're back to creatures of the night monotone. Yeah. That one, yeah. does, I'm going to dance. It has that that again. You know this. Yeah. I'm not going anywhere <laughs> with it. And on the eighth day, it's grown on me a little bit over the years, but it's another one that doesn't do a lot for me. But it doesn't matter. All the ones before it were so good yeah. that it's like yeah, 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 yeah. It's like that for me. I they're trying to end on one. an anthem. They're trying to end like a. They're always give, trying to end with uh, rock and roll all night. Yeah, I would give a this nine. a nine. Right. I really, I really like it. I really like the tour. I was happy for Kiss. I remember when they were on MTV taking the makeup off with fucking JJ Jackson. Yep. And all that Jackson. shit. It was, it was totally cool. I really, 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 really was supporting Kiss then. And this is the time when I was really getting into the underground bands. I was finding my Merciful Fates and my Voivods and, you know, and Slayers and things like that. But I still had a thing because Kiss, just like you, it goes back to our youth. And I, yeah. I never, a lot of people, as we go on, abandon and all that stuff for times, like whether it be Maiden or Kiss or things they grew up with for the heaviest shit of the moment. They threw it to the back burner. I always kept that there. I always loved it. And I still kept up on Kiss. And I loved the tour, like I said. And I just thought overall they were back. I thought Vinnie yep. Vincent was a good helper at the time because if he was helping him there, it was getting back to it. You know, Ace had walked and he was doing his own thing. And it was just, it worked though, as I've told you off air before we started this, I, I never liked them without the makeup. I, I would I would rather have him. It, it just didn't work with Eric Carr becoming whatever he was, the bird or the fucking fox or whatever the fuck he was supposed to be. Well, he was the bird first. And then, yeah, he, yeah. yeah then they did the fox. And then, you know, then of course, Benny was the Egyptian hairdresser. You know, with that gold fucking thing on his head. They just, there was no need to go on. They couldn't keep creating characters when people came into the band. So they had to take the makeup off. Kind of what it was. Yeah, I, it was. Know, I would, I, see, I, I think Gene was phoning songs in, but I think on this one, they phoned him in. It was a better connection this time for Gene. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was no 5G, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't no going blind. Let's be honest here. No, no. And uh, next, we've got. Mark St. John, new guitar player, lasted for one album because he ended up getting some sort of arthritis in his hands. Uh, Animalized, 1984. Man, when this album came out, I loved it. I spun the shit out of this tape. I was trying to turn my cousin who loved Led Zeppelin, hated Kiss. They were up visiting for a weekend, and I was trying to push this on, and he just wasn't fucking having it. <laughs> right? It happens. It happens. But um, there's, it's an aggressive, it's an aggressive album. I like the album. There's not a lot of amazing songs on here. Um, had enough into the fires, the opening song, Heavens on Fires, the hit. It, that, that's a Paul typical kiss song. Uh, burn, yeah, bitch, burn, it, yeah, playing it, playing it, you know, by the books, playing it by the book, burn, bitch, burn. I like jeans again. The jeans songs in the later, you know, after the, the, the classic era. I always love his voice, I just love Gene Simmons' voice. I love the timbre in his voice. I love the way he sings, but I don't always love his songs. I just, 
I can look past it. He's got the voice. Just wish he had some better songs sometimes. I wish he, yeah, I wish he invested more. I feel the same way about Dio's later solo material. He's so good, but the songs aren't as good as his voice. Lonely is a hunter. uh, Get all you can take. Lonely is a hunter under the gun. That's a good song. Thrills in the night. That's another hit. Uh, While the city sleeps. Uh, Murder in high heels. Eh. Um, I don't know. This is a nowadays when I was younger, I liked this a lot. Uh, but you know, 84, I was starting to, this was probably my, well, I shouldn't say that cause I really liked the album after this too, but, um, kiss was starting to wane for me. I was starting to get into heavier stuff. I, okay. yeah, I found Metallica. I found merciful fate. I found all the shit that made me tear all these classic kiss posters off my wall and throw in the garbage. You know, I, oh, I still man. to this day, I kick myself, man, but you know, you're young and stupid, young and wasted. And, yeah. um, <laughs> This this to me is a six. This is a six and a half. It's I like it. I'll put it on now and I'll listen to it and I'll sing along with it and I'll enjoy it. I mean, it, but it's not a ten. It's I think this is just kind of where Kiss was at the time. You know, I don't know. What do you think? For me, I did not see the tour. I did not buy the album when it came out. I think I was actually this is when I kind of got into my drug phase. So I was probably yep. out partying with the girls and smoking the weed and whatever else comes along at those times. I was sixteen when this one came out. Um, the first time I remember hearing anything off this was Heaven's on Fire, MTV. Yep. thought it was okay. thought it was a step down from Lick It Up or All Hell's Breaking Loose, which were the videos from before. I was like, all right, Kiss has got another one out here. Again, another guitar player's in the band. Again, they'd have the makeup off. It's it's odd to see them like this. Gene, like he didn't know what to do with them fucking self. Um, when I, when I, I still didn't hear the record, I actually saw them kissed at a concert on MTV on this tour animalized live they did it and i taped it i, I love that i love that show that's a couple yeah, great it's a great show i, I love that's it. when I, that's when i fell in love with thrills in the night i think it's a yeah. fantastic song yeah okay that's all i remember really remember from this record at that moment when i finally sat down and listened to it i really liked i've had enough into the fire it's a great opener it's not it's not 10 exciter good but it's another great fucking kiss opener paul stanley desmond child's back behind there with them Heaven's on fire followed. Burn, bitch, burn. Did not work for me. When he goes, ooh, ooh, ooh. Not, like, <laughs> not like that. Then you're going to start getting to stuff on here that I don't even really remember. So I know I didn't like it that much. Get all that you can take. Uh, Lonely is the hunter. I was all right. Under the gun was all right. Eric Carr was on that one. Yep. I remember I mean, he wrote some of that. Yep, that's right. Thrills in the night is fantastic. Yep. When the city sleeps, murder in high heels. I remember those being duds. Because I remember after Thrills of the night, always playing through the record, not liking it. <laughs> thanks scott i love you buddy two times in a week you really do love me um <laughs> i thought the album cover was fucking pathetically bad still do when you just sell yeah. it up i was embarrassed for you um oh, yeah. we're getting into know, a like, long line of shitty it's covers. like something you'd see on a wall in a cheech and chong movie yeah <laughs> but um the, the truth of the matter is it was it was still kiss it was still 100 percent kiss yep. it just wasn't as good as the last two records uh, let's put it this way. They were out on the road more. They were probably thinking more than they were writing then. Gene was doing his fucking runaway movies and all that shit at the time. Yep. Um, the guitar playing was good. It was a little too flashy for Kiss, as we know. He only did the one album with them. Uh, Eric Carr was still solid. Paul's voice was carrying them. And as you know, and you've said earlier, Paul was Kiss at this time. Yep. He was keeping oh, yeah. the ship going forward. Um, I would give this record a five. I would give it a five. It's definitely a step down. I play it from now on. Now. I actually have the eight track. It was it's the last Kiss eight track they made. Um, oh, wow. I play it from time to time, and when I do, it plays that out of order. And I think what what I like about it is it plays my favorite songs in a row. Now <laughs> eight tracks never have it in order. And Scott Perfect. Carroll knows he hates eight tracks, so he knows what I'm talking about. Um, I hate him too. <laughs> but um, it I would give it a five. I don't I don't hate it. It's an average record. It's just a five. Well, next up, an album that I actually end up liking quite a bit still do to this day and this is funny because it was an 85 i was at this point pretty heavy into the heavy shit but kiss just it, i couldn't let it go and th- at this point kiss asylum it was all over mtv finally the glam scene seemed to be a place that kiss fit again they're like okay we we get where this is you know we get what this is new york dolls you know a little more slight harder rock version of new york dolls um kiss fits good in this era other than their their dressing oh my god the the stage clothes for this whole tour is like what the fuck is going on here but david lee roth's fucking mother made it for him 
But the, the Paul songs on this album are great. King of the Mountains, great. Anyway, Slice It is a kind of a lame Gene song. Uh, Who Wants to Be Lonely? A great fucking kid, uh, Paul song. Trial by Fire, another. Okay, I'm Alive. Love's a Deadly Weapon. I actually like that song. Tears Are Falling, great Paul song. That was a hit. Secretly Cruel, eh. Radar for Love, eh. uh, All Night, another. They had three, what, three singles off this. Tears Are Falling, All Night, and um, Who Wants to Be Lonely. They were huge. It blew Kiss back onto the... It, they're relevant again all of a sudden. Let's, let's, yeah, let's, say, let's be honest here. MTV brought them back now. They did. They totally brought them back. But the Paul songs were good enough to be... Yeah, they were well, good he, knew, he knew the formula. He had the formula yeah. down. The Desmond Child working relationship. Desmond Child was in there, yep. Yeah, I absolutely. Mean, it's the formula. This, for me, is an eight. I... I don't know what it is about it. I mean, even the the so so Gene songs, he is at this point totally phoning it in, but he's enjoying the success, which is kind of shitty. You know, he he's like he's standing up and saluting, like, yeah, I did this, but he really wasn't there for this much either, and it's kind of a shame. I mean, I don't you kind of feel bad based on much of that record. He might not have. I don't think, but he did. um, it's an eight for me. There's something about it. I like it. I like the way it's produced. Again, it's got. All the, the weird Kiss albums, they got like a weird little atmosphere to them. This has kind of got it to, I don't know, eight. What do you think? I'm much more down the list than you for this one. Sure. I think I only think there's really one really, really good song, and it's Tears Are Falling, which is a fantastic song. It's got yep. a great thing. Uh, you know, obviously now we're introducing Bruce Kulik, who to Who's me- Who's a great guitar player. Phenomenal pick for them. Yep. Quiet guy did his shit, didn't fucking act out. He's no nope. guy to this day, still a cool cat. Yeah, really he, like he took song. who wants to be lonely is not yeah. bad. It's a little bit like outside of the box for them to me. Who wants to be lonely? Whoa, oh, oh, oh. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I pl- I got this record. Um, I played it once or twice around that time. Now I was heavy metal, you know, underground like you then too, yep. but I still played it. It just didn't catch me. I'm looking at these songs, one what oh yeah, that uh 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 I'm going to be simple with this record. The album cover is terrible. The artwork oh, it's fucking sucked. terrible. You know, that look sucked. Um, didn't the see back the isn't much better. <laughs> didn't see the tour at all. Yeah, that's bad. I didn't see the tour at all. Like Paul Stanley's sound of his voice on this. Um, everything else was, see me, average. I did like Bruce Kulik, simple lead playing. If that is him on there playing those. I the know best West thing Beach, about this picture West is. was part of this too, I think. Is the. I the fucking Paul Stanley chest and bo- belly hair. Look at that. Like in this oh, uh, artist rendition, it's fucking terrible. <laughs> that's great. Um, yeah. I'm going to go the opposite. I'm going to go half of what you went. I'm going four. to me, Bobby. to me, their worst album to date was this one. Th- this, yeah, this is bad for me. It's not, I don't want to say this is bad, bad, but for kiss, they, they were just going, I had to look it up. I was so high and mighty animalized fell. And then this one really fell. So now I'm doing this with it. You know, I'm not, I'm not up here anymore where it's just kind of teetering off. It's going like this. We're yep. in a nosedive now. And right. again, you know, Gene not being there, it being the 80s, so much competition, all that. You got two good songs on that. Bruce is in Grand Funk. He is. Well, for me, this next little era of Kiss is rough. I, I really struggle with this. Um, We got 1987's Crazy Nights. And uh, the best thing about this is Paul's thong. <laughs> what the fuck dude That's fucking borrowed that shit from mark starachi <laughs> uh this to me oh, crazy nights is a crap song that was the hit um hell or high water eh. i don't know man i look at this and i just i haven't listened to this enough to really wrap my head around it and um it just it it continues on into the glam era of Asylum, but I don't think the songs are as good or as memorable. There's just a whole bunch of stuff on here I'm not familiar with and I don't even really care about. This is a two. Two for me all day. This is going even lower than fucking um, than Asylum for me, too. It's bad. Crazy Nights is awful. This was a huge album in UK. I remember Kerrang! It was like, they were massive. Kiss was going back over there doing great. The song was huge all over the world, but here, I mean, it was sort of hit. For Kiss, it was a hit here, but it wasn't good. I listened to this album. I went I went over some of it today. It's boring as hell. It's forgettable from the get-go. It's bad. The Paul songs are not that good here. They're I think not. he was fucking tired of fucking running the ship here. He still was doing what he had to do, but it just... It wasn't there. I mean, there's a lot of outside writing here going on. Diane Warren's writing with them. Mitch Weissman. We got David Sigerson. 
We got Desmond Child back. We got fucking uh, Kim Mitchell's in here. Bruce Jurgen. Every song, it's somebody with somebody. You can't get the personality kiss anymore. It's gone. I don't hear the Paul Stanley vibe anymore because, I mean, it's one thing to hook up with one dude and one or two songs, but when it's every fucking thing, and now you've got Bruce Kulik writing stuff. You know what? It's really, the the bad thing is you've got so many talented players in the same room. You should be writing as a band. I mean, to I mean to not be so interested to even be in the same room with your band members and do all your writing with other people and it's, then bringing it to the table. It's fucking it, it's a it's business. A corp- I mean, it's a corporation. It's a corporation. It's a corporation. Yeah, corporation. Yeah. They're just like, hey, man, we, you know, there's a lot of money to be made. Just, you know, and I, I'm going to go on record and say some of these ones we're at right now, they're rent records, man. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and this is a good point. Right. They didn't go to White Snake. The other, bon Jovi was passing them by. White Snake yep. was passing them by. Yep. Even fucking Cinderella was passing them by. They were yep. trying to copy these guys instead of being leaders. They're being followers. See Judas Priest for how not to do that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they were becoming these. They were following the leader, man. Fucking Paul Stanley. He, he was fucking these guys' mothers, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fucking come on. Um, For me, would you say a two? I'm a two. I'll go with I'll go a two and two point five on this one. I do I'm not gonna, like, I'm gonna I give it a, like this one of this is one of my least favorite kiss records. I gotta give it a two because the one, I mean, Bruce Kulik's solo work, he's a great guitar player. You can't give it a one because it's not terrible. I mean, I know Paul sings good on it. That's what I'm gonna go on. It, it does not much for me. It's just it's just, that, that single's terrible. Yeah. Oh my god. And next album for me, 1989. I don't even own this kiss album. This is stupid fucking cover, hot in the shade. I'm going to show it to everybody. It's the Sphinx wearing a... I listened to this album for the first... mascot. Other than the all the videos on here, all the singles off this album, this is the first time I've listened to this album in full this week. And I got to say, Paul Stanley knows how to write a hit. And there's what's on here. The uh, Forever is you know it's kind of a ballad but it's a really well written song it's a good fucking song it, that, um, was a, that was a huge huge hit in america yep hide your heart was the other one uh, it's another it's kind of cheesy everybody covered that yeah it's kind of cheesy but it's it's a good song and it's a good paul song i like um, it too. every single song on here that gene simmons brought to this album is sloppy blues rock garbage it's it is less than it, it I don't care how good the guy sings. That can't even save these songs. He's just like, I don't know if he's trying to kick it old school on this, but there's like an old bluesy rock feel to his songs and they just don't, it's not even in the glam realm. It's just kind of, it's like throwaway guard. He seems tired. He's just doing it just to do it. It might've been whoever he hooked up to write with influenced him in that manner. I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs of the, who wrote on this like I said, I don't even own it. First time I listened to it. Yeah, this I can year. tell you, Bob Halligan Jr. wrote Rise to It with him, famous for his Judas Priest tunes. Tommy yep. Thayer's writing Betrayed with Gene. Holly Knight, Desmond Child, Bruce Kulick writing songs. Halligan again, Vinnie Ponchi's in there. Michael Bolton did Forever with him. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a good song. That's a good song. You know, Tommy but- Thayer, Desmond Child, Vinnie Poncha. I mean, every song, Adam Mitchell, it's somebody's in there with him. I mean, this is the point where. Paul should be going in a room going, I, man, I could do this in my sleep. And unfortunately, he couldn't do it when he was awake. Yeah. Well, I got to give this a three because of uh, Forever is a great song and Hide Your Heart's a good song. Um, it's much better album than fucking uh, yeah. Crazy Nights. But that's not saying a lot. It's not saying a lot. Yeah, it's yeah like, no, we're now we're, we we came to this as Kiss was our favorite band. We were growing up, and we've seen how this is going. And it seems yeah. like you and me took the same plane ride that day, man. Yeah, we were we were the on the same part, fucking flight. Kind of, you know, we detoured off. Yep, absolutely. So that's, that's a, you say it's a three. It's a three, and that's being kind, but because I like Forever a lot. <laughs> I I remember when the album came out. I remember reading all the interviews. Kiss said, "We're back to getting out. We're going to play two hour sets." We're playing tons of old shit. They came out. They were playing "I Stole Your Love," opening with that. Playing extremely long sets, lots of fucking deeper cuts than they played in many, many years at the time. Um, they, he was talking about this new record. It's going to be back to the basics of Kiss, and it's fucking. If I'm looking at this, it's 15 tunes, which is about six tunes too many to begin with, whether good or bad. It was a long record. I didn't like the album cover either. I didn't like nothing about it. I remember trying to go see him on this tour. And we couldn't get it. We went to the arena. We actually had a we had a keg of beer from the night before. We pulled up in front of the place, tried to go in and see it. 
And the guy said the show had already started. They wouldn't let us go in. We couldn't even buy tickets. So we sat outside and watched it through the glass doors. And they were they, they were blowing shit up. It was like, you know, big time bombs and shit again. It was all of that going on. But when I got a hold of the record, which was used, I didn't even go out and buy it. I've got a used copy at Joe's Record Paradise. I put it on. It did nothing for me. Absolutely yeah. nothing. I'd heard forever. Forever is not a tune for me. I don't like it. Never did. Thought it was sappy, bad. Just, just too it's by sappy. The book. But I thought it was a good Paul song. Yeah, I like. I, I don't mind sappy. Like you know, if you're going to something, you know, I'm fine with that. It's just that song. It just had those the, the chord changes. It just seemed like it was could be like eight, you know, mid '80s foreigner or fucking Bon Jovi. It just, I just didn't like it. Rise to it. I think I liked the girls in the video. Maybe they were shaking their tatas or something like that. Maybe, you know, at the time I'm looking, but I always liked hide your heart. I always thought that was a good tune. And that's the one that, but really is the, is the savior for me. I'm looking at this stuff. I'm remembering some of these tunes, Cadillac dreams. It's all forgettable. You love me to hate you somewhere between heaven and hell. I mean, that doesn't even sound like kiss titles anymore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Getting away from, you know, shock me. But anyway, um, Hide Your Heart, I remember they, they did it. Ace did it. Molly Hatchet did it. I think Lita Ford did it. Bonnie Tyler did it. I mean, everybody did that fucking song. And I like Kiss best because I like Paul Stanley's voice. So there yep. you go on that. Good video. Like I said, didn't see the torques up outside a glass thing. Kiss just kind of came again. Definitely, definitely better than Crazy Nights. I'll agree with you there. I'll, I'll give it a 3.5. I really like Hide Your Heart. It's always been a good song, you know, and I like the cool video. And Yeah. But, I mean, we're really digging deep now. It's we're digging. You're digging. You're digging. I mean, this is the era we're digging. And, it, I, you know, I'll, I'll shut up as we're moving forward. But fucking, uh, that just doesn't, it doesn't do nothing for me. And <laughs> and where we're going next, man. Okay. I'll let you go ahead. <laughs> but the uh, one thing to be noted is um, during this whole time, the last couple albums, Eric Carr started... You know, he was the steady, always stable workhorse for the band. He was a fan that loved to be there. And not only was he a fan, he was an amazing talent. He's a great drummer. Yeah. He's a great singer. And he had a voice that resembled Peter Chris in a lot of ways. He had that raspy, raspy fire. And um, But as it went on, the demons started catching up with him a bit. And uh, reading Paul's book, he was saying that um, Eric was like, going out and, and playing the songs like double time fast. The band got really fast during this time. They're, they, they really the last time. They're playing those old songs so fast. And he'd always be looking down Eric, like slow the fuck down. Eric was trying to prove himself because he was walking in the shadow of Peter Chris. And um, Paul was saying that he was always, Eric was always like lamenting that I wasn't the original drummer for kiss. Why wasn't I the original drummer for kiss? I'm, I was, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just the second guy. And, it always bugged him. And then shortly after that, he ended up getting sick and he died of cancer, heart, uh, some cancer in his heart. Yeah. He very died, rare cancer. Very rare cancer. It took him pretty quick and he died in 1991. Um, the band a year later came out with this album, Revenge. What do you think? Everybody seems to like this record. I, can't I like it. I, I cannot like it. stand it. I cannot stand it. I never could. I didn't like Unholy when it came out at Borby. was that same monotone, Creatures of the Night. Oh, I like holy. That song. I, I remember reading promo going, we're going to have, you know, they, they had a new promo guy. He said, man, every, the last five Kiss singles have been Paul Stanley. We're definitely coming out with a Gene song this time. We want him back. They made his, they made his look more demonic again. He got to grow the facial beard, had all that shit down. Had Rolled his eyes before. back in his head. They went, yeah. they went more black, dark. The whole band had a more, you know, like we're not we're not so colorful anymore. Black black you know. leather, man. There you go. We're back. Yeah, Eric Singer co uh, comes in on drums from Paul Solo. Fucking. Well, he uh, was also on Black Sabbath Warren and Black Sabbath. Lita Ford he, all over. Alice Cooper. Blah 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 blah. He's a great um, drummer. Didn't like Unholy. Take it off. I remember that's the video with the tatas. I that didn't do nothing for me. <laughs> uh, if I had to pick one song, I could stick to sit through. It'd be Tough Love. That one sounds a little bit like kiss <laughs> spit i cannot stand it sounds like fucking the red hot chili peppers i cannot stand that song it sucks <laughs> god gave rock and roll to you russ bauer kiss put their names to it they redid it heart of chrome nah no thank you thou shall not you're absolutely right i shall not play this record anymore <laughs> every time i look at you i look the other way i don't That's like that, hit. that was I, it that I, was the hit i just single. wanted they still played on a couple tours after that that one bored me uh, they did get pay pay respect to Eric Carr with the drums from '81, the Car Jam. Yeah, people love this record. I mean, when Kiss goes, they're still saying it's one of their best studio records. They compare it to Destroyer, 
like I said earlier, I'm not a big destroyer guy because I think most of it's boring after the first three tracks. But this one was bad to me. I had a friend that played the shit out of his car. We'd always drive out to practice and uh, he'd be playing it over and over. And I just could not get into it. I still can't. I just, I, I know. I just can't get into it. I'm trying. I'm laughing at this. Look at it like does. It looks like Morbid Angel. I do. I see the Dave Vincent in uh, fucking. Where's the uh, cod piece? I don't see the cod piece. Eric Singer. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Where's Trey Azagoth with his crybaby tears? Well, um, for me, okay. You I'm sorry. I was gonna say I would give the I would give this one. I'll give it a three. I'll give it a three. Right on. I like the production on it. I wish there was Kiss songs there. I don't like where they were. That one song, Domino, sounds like fucking ZZ Top. Yeah. You I know what? Like I like that. You know, I, I don't know if it was because the two albums that came before it were so bad. I mean, granted, I didn't hear Hot in the Shade in full until this week, but this other album I've heard, it's garbage. And I assumed Hot in the Shade was garbage, and I assumed correctly. But this was a shift into heavier stuff. I liked the song Unholy. I thought it was cool. I was surprised it had a little bit of bite, a little darkness. Sure, it was probably contrived. They're trying to fit within, like I said, Kiss always maintained the Kiss sound, but they tried to be a bit chameleons. They tried to bend a certain way to the times, which we'll discuss more here well, coming while, up while next. While you're saying that, let me just say one thing that, that matches that for me that doesn't work is they went just outside the box enough to fuck it up. For me, right? they fucked up. It's like, I mean, I want to like this, but it does that. And I want to like it with this. It's, it's trying to be this. I was like, why can't it just be fucking Kiss? I mean, they could write hard rock, fucking Zeppelin-inspired rock tunes at yep. this time and it would have worked but they just i don't know whether they lost it. i just don't know how paul Stanley wrote all those songs back to back to back to back year after year after year you had making love love gun i stole your love fucking tonight you belong to me just kept rolling year after year and all of a sudden i'm getting this bullshit you know it don't I mean, gene it don't mean spit to me I got, 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 the big disc the big disc da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> it's like fucking beastie boys man come on <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i mean i like domino spit oh, i like boy. i like gene's voice and there's a little bit of fire to it and a hell but, of a voice he's a hell of a voice god gave rock and roll to you yeah, i mean that is such that they have wrote that song 15 million times in their career um this to me is a five it's way better than the two came before it and i liked it a lot more when it came out um what the hell is it with the yeah the god gave rock and roll to you i mean ugh, i don't know man it's good it's okay i'll put it on and i'll enjoy it but oddly enough i really like the album that came after this which i know you're gonna want to throw garbage at me for saying I'm that gonna, i'm gonna, I'm gonna you're, fart your change purse <laughs> you're gonna fart my change purse but uh go ahead you start off i'll, I'll what, uh, what, what, what what is it oh yeah we're going okay yeah, the, someone gave me a bootleg of this before it was even ever put out because, you know, it sat for a while. And they were like, oh, man, Kiss is doing a grunge record, man. Have you heard it? I'm like, I don't want to hear that. I hate grunge. I don't need to hear that. <laughs> I got the fucking tape, and it had the song titles. It was just somebody wrote them. You know, they recorded it off some bootleg tape. I put this fucking thing on, dude. I could not stop laughing. It was so lame. <laughs> hey, I, I'm a millionaire. I fuck girls every night. I got so much money. Everybody kisses my ass. I feel nothing but hate. I was just like, what the fuck is this? And then oh, I wish it would rain. I'm like, what is going on? Kiss. And I remember, and then when I finally saw the CD and they were like the back cover where they're like playing in a little room with like, I mean, where's the fucking kiss stage, man? Like practice <laughs> TV 50 watt amps and shit. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Dude, this, in my, my King Valley book that I did five years ago, it's got voted one of the worst piles of shit. Not one song about fucking. Not one. Not no. even pussy. Not doing anything. It's fucking songs about being sad. It's <laughs> fucking about being sad in my head. It never goes away. I confess. In the mirror, I walk alone. What the fuck is that, man? I mean, I'd rather I'd rather hear a tits and ass, you know, as Paul would say, a suck fuck song again. Before this. And I was just like. God, they want to suck Alice in Chains' dick so hard, man. Oh, yeah, they, they totally do. And I they hate did. Alice in Chains. I can't stand that kind of shit. I, I, I don't want to hear Kiss doing it. Kiss did disco, and it was at least memorable. And okay, Kiss did fucking Freddie Mercury fucking, you know, fucking operatic fucking stuff. And it was okay. I don't want the grunge. I don't have nothing that I can attach to to it. And I, and I heard it and just, it, I mean, even Paul later said, 
what the hell were we so sad about? We weren't sad about nothing. They don't, they, there was no reason for them to stare at their shoes. They weren't woe is me. No. Nope. And they did it to do it because they wanted to fit in. I mean, I think I remember Gene Simmons saying he wanted to be nothing, but he wanted to be the smashing pumpkins. He fucking said he wanted to be the fucking, the fucking smashing fucking pumpkins, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Zero. Zero. Well, <laughs> everything about this. I hate this record. Well, you're going to hate me. You're going to hate me. rain all over every copy. <laughs> I hate it. I There's hate something it. about this record. One of the lamest fucking piles of shit records to ever come down the pike. <laughs> zero. And I mean negative zero. I mean zero. <laughs> <laughs> zero times one is still zero. Um, okay, hold on. You're going to talk about good about it now? I'm going to talk good about it. Okay, I like this ahead. record. <laughs> There is this okay. Let's be honest with each other here. Kiss at this point is spinning again. They don't know who they are. They have an idea who they are, but that doesn't seem to sell anymore. So, you know, the last album, last you know, the album tried to heavy it up a little bit. They got the leather on, and then what happened? Grunge exploded. This is nineteen eighty-seven, and um. They tuned down. They got heavier. They're obviously influenced by the uh, Seattle thing. Obviously, their wallets Everybody... were influenced. I don't think they're musically they were influenced by it. Their wallets were influenced. I will agree with you. I will agree with you there. But um, there's something I got a little tired of the. Uh, hold on one second. Sorry. You're okay. While you're waiting, everybody. I can't see anybody's quotes. They probably half y'all love it and half y'all hate it too. Sorry, my kid. My kid was fine. Go ahead, buddy. I end up liking these songs. I end up going on a road trip to see Zoller and his buddy Hefe um, in Wisconsin. I put this in there because I picked it up used somewhere, and um, I got a little tired of the the puss, the tits and ass thing. And you know, they're starting to get older dudes, and it just seemed kind of like the same shtick going out. They're not singing about that, and yeah, they're sad on this. They're so- talking about suicide and all this other crap, which it's very atypical for Kiss. But I like Paul's voice. I like Gene's voice. The songs are heavier. Um, Rain's a good song. Master and Slave. Childhood Zen. Childhood Zen's probably my favorite on here, actually. Um, I'll be there's a good song. Is it Kiss? It is not Kiss. It's them trying to be Seattle. They're trying to worm their way in so they can keep the show going they can keep their pocketbooks full um nirvana Soundgarden, all that crap allison change is blowing up and i do like some of that stuff but um so that's probably why i didn't mind this so bad that's but. probably where it is like i said there's none of that does anything for me so i get where you're if you if there's an enjoyment to that style of, yeah. with you then i get it and it's then you, it pulls into your thing like i don't mind disco and i don't mind the fucking you know the queen meatloaf fucking you know stuff yeah. so that works for me but this and doesn't. i and it, you know the first time i saw really ever heard grunge is when i saw voivod on the nothing face tour soundgarden opened and they were fucking heavy, and they were yeah, great. You liked them. I remember we talked about that before. They blew, I hate to say it, but they blew everybody off the stage. The crowd was there for them. It was, they were The place went nuts. I mean, Voivod were still amazing, but after the crowd left after Soundgarden, there was about 15 people watching Voivod, which is sad. But um, So I like that. It's like, it's like a bit of a Zeppelin vibe. It's heavy. This is heavy. It's good. I like both of the, the main songwriters' vocals on here there's songs give me some stuff i'm i'm a good seven on this honestly i know you like i said That's get out the garbage <laughs> um and if you're not into the grunge shit i get it i get how it's a problem and it and it's them not being them they're being yeah, very, I, I just don't understand how they can be so fucking embarrassed about the elder but then like say like ah, this was what it is like no but even they look back this, on this one. in the be book he looks this fucking one man. yeah he looks back on this with regret as well they're well, being yeah. very they're being very disingenuous which is probably what feels gross to them because it's not them you know but i like it do I listen to it a lot? I don't. I did when I bought, like I said, I bought it used. I went on a road trip. I listened to it probably five times in a row. And like, there's some good songs on here. There's some good shit. And it's, you know, Paul's voice rules. Gene's voice rules. They're going darker, which at the time, that's where I wanted to be. I wanted it to be that. I was sick of hearing about fucking 16-year-old girls. <laughs> you Fell know, out. it just. 
<laughs> but um, so yeah, that's where I'm at with that one. I knew I knew that one was gonna cause some. That's shit. fine. I like that. It was a good little little Ali Frazier there. <laughs> but um, Ali. <laughs> But then again, we've got a changing of the times. Um, they get together and kind of do a Hail Mary thing. They, What's another thing that was very big at the time? MTV is still big. And their Unplugged series is huge. Yes. Uh, you've got Nirvana that did a big one. You've got Allison Chains that did a big Queens one. Queensryche did a real big one. Queensryche did a big one. I mean, there was hit. I mean, every time these Unplugged things would happen, the CDs would sell huge. And yeah. um, so Kiss did one. And it's very interesting. When I was back in my tape trading days, I did a... Um, video trade with pat from Hellwitch. you know he was you remember his list the fucking notebook oh, yeah. telephone book size video list i used to trade with pat, pat i got this kiss unplugged the uh the uncut recording of this right the video. Extra, the extra stuff the country it's four hours long Hunters. yeah it's four it's four hours long it's yep. got gene fucking up the lyrics and they have to stop because it has to be perfect for the the per, for the show so there's a studio audience and they're going through these songs like i think um Oh, one of the um, forever it might have been, or every time I look at you, Paul stopped that song like five times because this song is so important. I just want it to be perfect. And, you know, they would just keep going and over and doing it and doing it and doing yeah. it. It was very interesting. Uh, That's a great, fun video to watch. You yeah, know, they're very, I like it too. It's, it's very cool. Well, but what was the big thing there? And the writing was on the wall with this album. Things are not going well in Kiss. Again, they're not selling. They, they're, they've kind of, alienated their fan base with this album their fan base is like like you king what the fuck is this shit and um so they get they play a lot of the classics acoustically and at the end they bring out ace freely peter chris and the crowd and they kept it secret the whole time they come out everybody goes fucking bonkers nuts and at that point uh, it was i watched it when i when it aired on mtv i watched it and when i yeah. saw that happen i said eric and bruce better be looking at each other and saying Avita Zane, BB, because <laughs> we know what's going to happen here. That crowd yeah. reaction right there was all it took. That's what the people wanted. They wanted the Fantastic Four back together. And it's sort of been them. building at the uh, Kiss conventions, you know. Even yeah, the, that yep, little bit. exactly. The Kiss conventions was the lead up to this big. That was kind of like them doing the the rehearsals for yeah, this see, MTV they sniff, thing. They were sniffing Paul, Peter and fucking Ace to see where the fucking uh, where their heads were. Yep. But um, so that happened. It really uh, blew up for them. For me, it's a fun, it's a fun release. I used to have the CD. I'm missing that in the one that came out. I used to have them. I must have sold them. But um, so yeah, that's, they, that, that that unplugs phenomenal. Sure enough, good. something on there should have been put out as a single again. They yeah. missed it again. That was an amazing acoustic version of that. And World Without Heroes too, man. Absolutely great. They pulled out some cool songs for that. Um, but what came after it? After yeah, they had to get Ace back on track. They got him and Peter yeah, back in the band. Yeah, exercise fucking time for Peter. Peter couldn't really handle it. They had to trigger up his drums because he couldn't hit hard anymore. Ace, Tommy Thayer, who was like a... Ace called him a tour manager, but he was also behind the scenes doing like the Kiss history book. and yeah, He was a gopher <laughs> for a while. Did a lot of shit for him. Yeah, he was definitely a go uh, gopher for them, but... Tommy came in and had to teach Ace all of his own solos again. And yeah, they got Ace rehearsing and they got back together and they did this massive tour. And um, they released the album, which I used to have and I don't have anymore. Psycho Circus. It was Build to Be. <laughs> you're all... in the sky. Uh, you're in Marty's phone book. <laughs> there was supposed to be all four members contributing, writing together again like the old days, and it didn't end up being that way. It ended up being, in the press, Paul was saying how great it was to have them all back. The energy's great. It's like the old days. You know, he's saying all the things you need to say to make the fans happy so the fans pack the stadiums. They packed the stadiums. They did it. They got it back. They're back on top again. They got the makeup back on. They got the pyrotechnics. They got Ace and Peter. Ace is actually doing pretty good. I've watched a bunch of videos from that time. He's okay. Well, He's I'll, not. I'll you, uh, for me, I saw him. I saw one of the very first shows when he came back to Pittsburgh. Metallica was actually out there in the fucking audience with us. And uh, we were down there. Ace was fucking up everything when I saw really him. everything wow. really, really bad. My uh, Shane from deceased with, it, with me, we were looking at each other like, man, this motherfucker's got a long way to get back. Peter didn't sound bad, but it definitely had the triggers and yeah. it almost kind of like, I knew it wasn't because I was watching. We were pretty close. We could see him. He was playing it, but it's, it was sounded so like 
and like he couldn't fuck up like as if like man there's some kind of like machine keeping him going because it, it was it was simplified because yeah. i mean for me of all the I, peter chris is still my favorite kiss drummer for me 75 76 oh he's on fire Those he's on years, fire. winterland videos on youtube yeah he's unbelievable it's a different style and thing but he had such a swing to him such a you know this kind of thing it became just this that's all yep. he had left in the tank. And it, it was, it, I, I love the shows. I love seeing them. The set lists were unreal, especially the very early days when they were pulling deep, deep shit out before they kind of simplified. But Ace was, every time I saw him, and I would say I saw him on the on that first reunion tour, even before Psycho Circus, you know, even before they thought of an album, I saw him about five times. And Ace was never good to me. Never. And yeah. I wanted him to be, but he just wasn't. There would but be you, when I watched the videos. The the, I watched it like three or four videos. There's a couple flubs, but more or less he was there. You know, I thought he was doing okay. He was and better than he been been years for sure. I mean, they definitely oh. had him back in the right direction, but it was so far removed from what it was. And Peter too, you know. Yep, and it's sad because I mean, now you watch you know the solo albums. He's putting out these solo albums, and the diehard Kiss fans are eating that shit up. And I just don't get it because you you watch. He's got Gene's backup band. And he goes out and plays, and he sucks so bad. How can you play guitar for all these years and and suck so fucking bad? How? It, that that whole thing is, you know, the war is on. I'll tell anybody listening, whatever. I'm I'm from the Paul and Gene camp. I've had deceased running here since 1985, basically late '84. It's now 2022. Gone through yep. a lot of stuff with a lot of people, divorces, things. We've all gone through drugs. We've gone through wives. We've gone through fucking children. We've gone through death and this fan thing. Yep. Things come and go. But when Ace and Peter walked away the first time, they fucked up. Okay, they fucked up. They Ace can say, "Oh, was, I was ganged up on when Peter left, and it was two on one." Maybe so, dude. But you were fucking up back to destroyer days. Yeah, and we it about was it. justified. You showing up to record your albums on your fucking fourth fucking record you weren't showing up even the producers will say <laughs> Ace was playing cards he wouldn't come to his lead so we had fucking you know the cats from alice cooper putting them down but anyway but it, <laughs> <laughs> there you go i like you ash you're a good guy um but no but well you know so what what i when they brought him back i'm with paul on that you don't give them full reign back you know peter and Ace no. are like oh we're original members and we should be equal Dude, you walked away from it all. And not yep. only did you walk away from it all, but you came back. And not only did you walk away from it all, but you fucked up again. A yeah. second chance at being great again. And from what I'm seeing on the, those seven, five, seven shows I saw before they did Psycho Circus, I don't even know if Ace could have played on the record. Because they were like, oh, they didn't want me to play on the record. They didn't want to use none of my material. They didn't want me to be on the record. Peter Chris, we didn't want him to play drums. Well, if you can't fucking do it, you can't fucking do it. Now you're not getting paid. You're not getting paid a quarter, bro. Because you're yeah, not pulling yeah, your fucking They weight. didn't deserve. Paul was there the whole time. I don't even think Gene yep. should have got as much as Paul. But yeah. you know, Paul Ace. I mean, uh, Gene was still at least there. But my bottom line is this: if they couldn't do it, that's one thing. On in their defense, Paul and Gene couldn't do it without them as Kiss. You know what I'm saying at the time, which is why you now see the other cats doing the makeup, which is to me is ridiculous, but it's only way they can do it. You can't give Eric Singer his own costume. You can't give Tommy Thayer his own. And yes, Ace and Peter, you know, they're always going to be that personality. But when you sell the rights away to your fucking image and stuff for a fucking lump sum of cash, then you then go on record saying, how can Kiss do this to us, man? The fans know I'm the cat. They know I'm the space man. Well, then motherfucking, why'd you sell your shit away? Why'd they're playing, they're playing to the, the, they're playing no to the fans. You. It's, you know, you say they're all about the money. You're not making the scratch they're making. You shouldn't be making what they're making. Paul never yeah. fucking left Kiss. Gene fucking, he fucking was tailing way behind Paul, but he yeah. never left Kiss either. Ace and Peter walked away. Ace talked so much shit about how fucking lame and soft Kiss came. And then he does Felix Comet. Next thing you know, he's putting out songs that sound like fucking Foreigner with keyboards in it. Can't remember the one song he had. It was so light. I was like, this motherfucker is trying to be Michael Bolton. You know, even yeah. Ace fell for that shit. Ace did a cover of Hide Your Heart too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when they came back, it's a it's a back and forth thing. And now it's really bad because they didn't get together at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And all this time's passed. And Peter Chris is old. I watched his last concerts in those little fucking clubs in New York. And, hey, he's a fucking old man. He still didn't sound that bad on drums for his stuff. And he went out with style. But he's definitely got that New York fucking attitude, which they're all from that area, you know, for the most part. Not Gene, you know, whatever. But he's fucking pissed off at the world. He stays that way. And Ace is just likes to get the fans riled up. 
I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. I met Peter Chris at one of those chillers in New Jersey. He was super cool to me. I fucking cried. I fucking had to be seated for 15 minutes because it was one of my superheroes as a kid. I went back to when I was nine and that Kiss Alive 2 album and fucking was like, man, Peter Chris, I literally bumped line and hugged him and said, you're motherfucking Peter Chris. And of course, I, you know, I was so up on him telling him how much I fucking loved him. He fucking was like that. I love Foreigner, but we're not talking about that right now. <laughs> Ace, Ace was making fun of Kiss for being Foreigner. Anyway, so... <laughs> So I met Peter Chris. He was hey, super King, cool. King, yeah. I'm going to go. I can, I'll be able to hear you still, but I got to pee so bad. I'm okay, about to pee. piss my panties. But okay, I'll, it's, I'm all right. I'll, it's all right. I'll have Bob Kulik fill in for you. Right. That's right. <laughs> my piss. Yeah. He'll, oh, go ahead. I'll, anyway. So what, what I was saying was, so I met Peter Chris. He was super nice to me. Not, not 45 minutes after he met me, I saw him walk away and go into the, this elevator to leave. And this lady was like, Peter, Chris. And he shut the elevator door right in her face. He was a schmuck to her. He was cool to me, but he was an ass to her. Now, Ace Freely, I went up to meet at one of these chiller things. And probably some of you guys listening, I met him somewhere along the way, Kiss Convention or something. He was the biggest dick I've ever fucking been near in my life. I got close to going up there and... This guy in front of me had a Kodak moment camera and he fucking was trying to take pictures of Ace. Ace grabbed it out of his hand, tore it up and said, you don't even get to look at me until you give me $60. Now, a friend of mine's mother was actually the his cash drawer lady. And she said he does it all the time. He literally got up and walked away and had them come put up a coat uh, dressing room fucking thing. And he got behind it. So people couldn't even look at him until they paid him 60 fucking dollars. And I was like, this guy's a fucking prick. But everybody says, Ace, he's the cool one. Paul and Gene are the dicks, this and that and that and this. Now I've never met Paul or Gene. I don't know. I know friends that have worked for Kiss and said Gene Simmons was nothing but super cool to them, you know, and, you know, and, and people can say he wants to, he wants to fucking trademark the fucking money sign and the fucking horns and all that shit. I don't give a fuck about any of the business stuff. I see a 70 fucking plus year old man flying to the top of arenas. That's got enough money to last him uh, fucking hundred thousand years, all pun intended, but fucking, uh, he fucking still goes out and works. He, he works his ass off for better or for worse. Yeah. He loves his money. He's wearing it on his boots in 1974 on the Mike Douglas show. So he's always had his money signs and shit. He's part of that. Paul Stanley. I've heard good and bad things about. I've had people meet him, say he was super nice to them for other people say he was kind of standoffish and shy and weird and all that. So do each their own. But in my own opinion, Peter and Ace, Peter was super nice to me. Ace was a cock smoker to me. He was a fucking dick. One of the worst experience I've ever had. And I've met a lot of people in my fucking day. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not trying to take sides when it comes to that. But if, but if you're asking me if I'm from the Paul and Gene or the Ace and Peter camp, it's 100% the Paul and Gene. I agree. I mean, 100%. That, 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 I don't care what if they got, if that's what Tommy and, and fucking Eric are doing it, then do it. You know, and just to address everything about this subject, and I'll shut up, Paul Stanley with this lip syncing stuff going on now, sing, not singing all the parts. I don't know why he wants to fucking do that. I mean, his voice does is totally shot. Yes, he's a fucking singing fucking the highest notes for years. He always sang the notes when I saw him forever. Yeah. Until he lost his shit. He had that voice surgery, which really fucked him up. He's never come back. Not only does he do a whole fucking kiss, never going to end tour, but he also does the boat tours. He don't shut up. He does his soul fucking station fucking band. He don't stop doing it. It's like me. He won't shut the fuck up, man, and take a <laughs> fucking break, man. You know what I'm saying? And that's something that's just not going to go. But if, as kiss, I've seen them like five times on this, and I can tell when they're flying in the backup vocals on I Was Made For Loving You and stuff. Some of the parts he is singing, I don't care what the guy on YouTube has the little tapes and this sounds like that, and that sounds like I watched the shows, too. I've been in right up front and all that shit i wish he just let the crowd sing the songs they're singing them anyway yeah I mean, he doesn't you know, need to sing one fucking lyric all night just fucking enjoy yourself because for his for all his hip surgeries and his platforms and his age he still runs around he's a great 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 front man amazing you know man so people are out on kiss kiss sucks ace is singing you know this now i've watched ace really solo stuff i couldn't sit through that concert if you paid me to i cannot stand his solo stuff with these oh. guys get out there now i mean the band's fine it's him he's the he's the weak link and why is he doing songs that weren't even his why is he doing love gun why is he doing that shit if you believe in all your shit play your fucking shit yeah and it, i heard you think about the ace thing and i think that guy is drank his own kool-aid i don't even think he realizes how he fucked up over the years i don't think he cares i don't think it really occurs to him that like i said i don't know how much is going on upstairs in ace's head but um and in paul's defense i mean kiss are so fucking monstrously huge if you were on for every single person that came up to you 
that would be a that would be a job in itself. I mean, I'm sure that guy can't go out anywhere with people not coming up to him. Oh my God, Paul Stanley! I mean, if you're not having a bad day, the last thing you want to do is stand and talk to people. I mean, I, I I guess I get that, but you know, the ace thing, and I feel really bad for the fans that can't let him go and still pay to see him. Like I said, I've watched probably half of three or four of his shows online. And it's fucking bad, man. He's got like three. He's the third of the three guitar players in his band. The other two guys can outplay him fucking standing still. And um, I don't even want to knock the guy. I'm with you. I don't even want to knock the guy. I mean, I, I want all those. I'm, so, I'm glad they're all four still alive, man. But some me of the too. shit that's in their fucking head and all that stuff. I, I don't know. I mean, they're, they're kissed. They done ruled the world. I'm just me. And I'm just from my way of looking at it. And I've been a fucking fan since I was nine. I'm 54 this year, man. So I think I have a say in it somewhere, at least from my angle, Mr. Nobody sitting in Pennsylvania on a Friday night in the fucking internet. That's just my opinion. I, yep. I love him to death. You know, I wanted to go up and shake his hand like I did Peter Chris. Peter Chris was so, so nice to me, man. Dude, I was in fucking tears. If I had the picture, I'd show you guys. I'm fucking out red eye sockets. I was fucking blown away. You were like, wrecked. Yep. <laughs> I, I was wrecked from it. But Ace, really, I was like, what a douche. And I I want to say this and you can move on talk what you want to say the reason he was so pissed off that day i found out from them was that Corey feldman was next to him and had three times the line of him he was pissed about that so he's taking <laughs> it out on everybody on his line he literally took this guy's camera and destroyed it man he broke this kodak fucking thing the guy had it wasn't even a phone camera he destroyed it he got up he fucking wrecked everything he said ah, ah, he threw a fucking fit man and it was like the biggest bitch bullshit i ever seen man and he hid he literally went and got them to get a dressing fucking you know i'm talking about those things you sat down and you get dressed behind yeah you know you sat behind there where you couldn't even see him until you paid and then you went behind <laughs> you're sitting at the table so you can no longer walk up and be like that takes really you know you, people down here have been up to chiller they've been to horror conventions and stuff they sit at a table if you don't got 60 dollars to meet him whatever he at least walks hey look i've done that many times bruce schooling i walked up to him one time and said it's really sucks he said oh come on man i said you know you're thinking it <laughs> <laughs> he laughed you know just shit like that i mean i've met big stars and margaret shit like that they didn't do that this is fucking yeah. ace really man come on but he yeah. tells everybody he's the real deal and paul and gene or this and that probably are too you know that's their world but from what from where i see it i i you know kiss is kiss is just about too old to do anything they're in the home run stretch and I, you know i'm glad they get to go out and stuff and eric and tommy's not that great eric singer is phenomenal he does a great job singing and playing yeah. tommy Thayer's is adequate but he i mean i think bruce kulik would have been a better fucking choice personally he would have but you know a lot of people rag on tommy but when i watch I'm him he, it. he nails he nails the ace solos a little more clinical than ace does obviously but he knows his shit, and he can. He, what was his band? Oh, Tommy Blue, earned it. He seems like a nice enough guy. Blue Murder was that his band pre? Black and Blue. Black and Blue. Black and Blue. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, the guy's got years. He's a good guitar player, and um, he's obviously he loves Kiss. He's been in the organization for many years, and um, give him his fucking spotlight. Ace can't do I, it I anymore. I go to see man. Paul and Gene. I'll be honest. I go to see Paul and Gene and hear the songs yeah. of my youth, man. Yeah, I've seen I've seen Kiss fucking thirty five times probably now. Yep. Over the years. And I'm talking like every time they come, if I was just looking online, they're playing in um I think they're playing down North Carolina. Was it North Carolina? No, no, they're playing somewhere. Um yeah, I think it's North Carolina. No, no, it, I don't know. I just looked it up earlier. Then they're going off to Castle Donington or some shit. Huh. Um Chains Around Heaven was a good song, black and blue. Right on. And um, well, next up, eleven years pass. Okay. <laughs> we got sidetracked there, man. Sorry. We got, oh, it's all good. No, side uh, sidetrack is good. That's what we're here for, to, to shoot the shit. Um, 11 years pass. This album comes out. Sonic Boom. We've got Eric Singer and Tommy Thayer in the uh, the iconic makeup, which threw everybody into a fucking tailspin tizzy fit. Which Can I, can I stop you for a second? You, you really didn't talk about Psycho Circus, though. <laughs> you know, I didn't. And I'm sorry. Um, there's one That's song okay. on there. That's why, because Doc McGee's on the other line over here. <laughs> <laughs> you got an earpiece on Drake. What was that? Okay. Oh, he said, tell, talk he said, tell the guy. He said, tell the guy with the skinny puppy poster in the background. He forgot Psycho Circus. <laughs> um, Psycho Circus. It's I like Psycho Circus. I think that's a decent Paul song. Um, the rest of the album, I couldn't tell you a fucking thing about. I thought it was kind of garbage. That's a two. Straight up. I listened to it twice. I really tried. I really was excited when they got back together. I hoped to go see him. I couldn't do it. Um, the yeah, like yeah, Jeff here. That says. was the three D tour. Yep, the three D tour. 
Miss Psycho well, Circus, well, the title Metal track, Madness, Big Six, Marty, stuff. and me all on the same page. I agree. The title track's great. Rest of it. Yep. And it showed that, that they could still do it, but you know, the rest of it's complete garbage. I couldn't yeah. tell you a fucking single. I didn't keep it. I didn't keep the CD. I got rid of it. So, I'll give yeah. it a two for that song. Yep, absolutely. A two. I think it's still on the set, too. Well, you know what? Hold on. Doc's on the line again. Doc, I got to tell you something. We didn't forget Psycho Circus. Kiss forgot Psycho Circus. <laughs> <laughs> they forgot they were recording an album. <laughs> I saw that, man. I saw that. But, um, yep, 11 years later, they get Tommy pull him out of the organization they bring eric singer back come dye his hair look as much like peter chris as possible um they put out this album sonic boom which i have not heard until uh, a couple years ago i got this on ebay for five bucks and um i'm not gonna lie it's not as bad as i thought it was gonna be and um i will say i was me and king were talking about this a little bit beforehand they kind of pull a, a chapter out of the Black Sabbath playbook when they got back together to do 13. What do you do? You look at your past. What was our successful moment? I think this was mostly Rick Rubin telling them to completely copy their first album, which they did mostly. Right. Uh, there's a lot of that going on here. This sounds like Kiss, and that's fine. I'm I'm fine with that. There's like I hear rock and roll over on here. I hear stuff from Hotter Than Hell. I hear. A lot of shit from the first five five albums or so with a better modern production. Um, the songs aren't as good as the as the early stuff, but man, it's not a bad album. It's really not. Um, I don't know. I couldn't really tell you <laughs> the song. I haven't listened to it enough. Say yeah is the one that they ended up playing live a lot. I think yeah. that was a single off this. Um, produced by Paul Stanley, co-produced by Greg Collins. So. And I think um, Paul's thing on here was um, to get Gene in the studio and actually have him play bass guitar because Gene's quite a good bass guitar player. He's quite good at bass. And if he's focused and get him in a room, he's a good, he can be a good songwriter. And I think that was Paul's thing. If we're going to do this, we're going to do it together type of thing. And um, not a bad album. It's not bad. I'm, I'm not, I've listened to it probably five times since I've gotten it, which isn't a lot in the grand scheme of history in my life but um it's not i thought this was going to be absolute fucking garbage and it's not garbage it's okay it's okay i give this probably a six well that's about five points more than me i played it today almost all the way through i tried i i don't we talked about this before we started i don't yep. hear as much old kiss as you do on this i still hear some of that twangy alternative little bit modern day delilah does nothing for me as the single I've oh that was it. another one that they play still yeah yeah i saw that on youtube before it was ever out i did do nothing for me i'm looking at the titles now just to um try to remember what i heard a couple hours ago that did nothing and um it still does nothing i mean i'm looking and it's just nothing does anything for me on this record i played it today i had my nice headphones on i got lost and i put my head back i was jamming i was jamming and then the record started <laughs> and, I was, and I wasn't, and I wasn't jamming anymore. It did. It just, uh, it came and went. It did nothing for me. I was just like, this was just what Paul had said was happening. And Gene was saying on record, like, why do a new kiss record? Nobody wants to hear these songs anyway. That's the record that makes me do that. I just didn't want to hear it. I, I can't find nothing to like about it. I don't like Paul's voice on it. The production is, is we, it's better than it's, it's, it's a, better production than the old days but i prefer the old days because it had a charm to yeah. it and now oh, it yeah. just sounds like another band it doesn't sound like kiss anymore it just sounds like insert hard rock sound here well they were know? a band back then they're not a band like we said they're a corporation yeah. now they're yeah, not who the hell knows anymore. you know and you say gene and all them are fighting to see who played on it whatever i give it a one i just could i i it, it's it's even worse than fucking it's it's not as bad as carnival because that's just ignorant to me <laughs> But it's better that it's 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 a step down from even Crazy Nights, which was still sounded like Kiss. This one, I I can hear what you're saying to a degree, but I don't hear enough of it to get it. I think every song has this like I, I, I don't know. I want to say alternative -y vibe to it. I just don't like it. Like well, there's it a, there's that, a definite that modern that sense to it. Of the time, I don't know. It's definite modern sense to it. Yeah, it just it just I, I I tried. Trust me, I tried. I just could not get into it. Well, I then saw uh, the tour. I saw the tour. They were good. Um, they weren't great. Was that the, was was that when um 
they go out with um, Motley Crue at this time? I don't know. No I, idea. I wondered if that was the one because I saw, I've seen Kiss tons of times. I went out and saw him with Motley Crue, and Motley Crue blew him away. And, I, and Motley Crue was 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 lame. Kiss was playing so <laughs> slow. I I think I told you this one time off when we were talking on another show. They played Detroit Rock City so slow it was like ten minutes long. It was literally like dan and dan and dan and I'm not even trying to be funny here. I was like, I'm not going to make this, especially when it was a night when Paul <laughs> wasn't singing that much. They were doing like War Machine, I Love It Loud, and I was like, these aren't even the songs I want to hear. I literally, the only time I've ever left Kiss before the end was that night. And I don't know wow. if that was Sonic Boom time, but they were just playing it like, you could tell they were playing to a click track, and it was, but I mean, that's fine if it's going to keep up, but it was. Well, they, so they have to know. with a, they have to with the vocal tracks, if not. Yeah, I've seen them many times enough. since, and it's gotten, it's not as fast as in the day, and it's sure not Eric Carr near the end fast, but it's at least in a tempo that I can go to, because these fucking bands that go on this new fucking pattern of, you know, it's halftime, and you're like, do you love me? I mean, like, and you're like, this is just dreary. I can't take when bands get old and they start slowing down, man. Yeah. Are they I down tune? I, and I, they I slow mean, down. I'd rather hear the fucking, the, the real deal than all this other flown in shit. I just don't like it. Well, um, following that up, three years later, we've got uh, Monster 2012. I think this is when I saw them and they were slow. Because this is a monster that normally had the spider web, the spider lights show. Does anybody out there be. know that? Yeah, is that when it was? I think it was when they had the big spider legs light show. Yeah. Okay. Well, I yeah, listened Monster, to this you album. Want to, you want to talk first? I listened to this album for the first time this week, and I thought it was better than Sonic Boom, to be honest. It seemed to be the songwriting was a bit better. They weren't trying to, to me anyway, so concerned about ripping off their old stuff. They just tried to write better songs. And uh, I thought the Gene songs were better. I like the Paul songs. Um Again, I've listened to it one and a half times, so <laughs> <laughs> well, that, I don't even own it. I well, don't even own it. And people that are watching this are, you know, since we've started a couple hours ago now, you can see the love has not, it, 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 Kiss has not kept our interest musically to the years. Like, we're seeing them again. It's doing It's doing this. It's yep. not going like, oh, bad album, back up, bad album, back up. It's literally going like this into the yep. toilet. And, yep. and I don't want to say that in such a bad way, but it's just either we're different people, the times are different, it doesn't mean as much in our lives, whatever. I'll say this. I listened to the, this whole record today, most of it, again, a couple parts I had to couldn't go through it. I also was on a time limit of what I had time to do. Yep. I think this is a much better record than Sonic Boom. Me too. I really like the single. I always liked that Hell or Hallelujah. I thought it was a good song. It's got yep. a good vibe. This one has the vibe to me of ripping off the older Kiss more so than that. I mean, there's still... I, I don't know what happened. I guess they're 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 happily married, but what happened to the suck fuck songs? Kiss should always have something. I mean, there was none on Psycho Circus. Was there any on Sonic Boom? There's none on this. Well, they I mean, look at their age. They're in their seventies now, and that. I know, that but can seems... you just have one? I mean, can we, <laughs> can we can we can we can we can we pretend "Take Me Down Below" is about pussy eating? Can we just pretend it? Baby, take your teeth out. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. And now it's just called calling doctor. <laughs> But I no, I'm looking at it. I liked I liked um Hell or Hallelujah was good. Wall of Sound was generic, but wasn't a bad sound. Shout Mercy was kind of good. I remember those were my favorite three. Freak started out all right, then it kind of got goofy. Side two, it slithered. It slithered down the ranks. But um I'll give this one a I give this one about a it's about as good as great. Uh, I actually like Hell or Hallelujah better than anything on Crazy Nights. I guess I'll go four on this one. But um it, again, it's I, I, the magic's gone to write records. I agree with them now. There's no need to write new records. They just don't have it in the tank. I, I'd rather had a one song new seven inch single for the tour and it been Hell or Hallelujah, and I'd have been okay with that. But that alone's better than anything I've heard on any album in the last. You know, yeah. You can go backwards on this fucking video. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I could give it a five. Like I said, I haven't spent enough time with it to really get familiar with it, but I think fives are a middle of the road. I mean, they're their glory days are obviously gone but i think what um i what i would like to end with on this is um the future of kiss and i will say that with a, a little uh story here it was um some time ago i've never seen kiss live i don't know how after all these years wow. I've, never, I've never i've seen maiden once i live i live up here in the sticks man it's uh all these things go through and i don't hear about it until after the fact but um 
here in a casino up here by uh, Traverse City, um, there was a Kiss tribute band called Kiss Army came. I was there. I went to it. I gambled. I got shit hammered, drunk. I went up front and sang along in front of the the, the fake Paul Stanley like a like a diehard fan, and they were fucking great. <laughs> they sounded. Blast. They sounded great. I had a great, they played all the old shit, like pre destroyer stuff. There might've been some destroyer tunes in there too, but it was mostly the older cool shit. Yeah, cool. Man, man, I had such a great time. I caught the fake Paul Stanley pick. You know, I did all that fucking shit and it made up for all the years. I never saw kiss. And, um, you know, there's all this talk about, you know kiss you know talking about oh i can see us you know kiss going on as a corporation with new members you know kiss has become more than you know the, the members of the band and you know at the time when i heard that for the first time i thought how fucking gross is that but then i think about the kiss army that i watched and how much fun i had and how good it was and those songs stand the test of time and kiss is always about the stage show and if it's a bunch of people that look like a young a young kiss all dressed in the makeup looking and playing and sounding like them playing it doing the songs justice at this point kiss has proven in the you know the last one two three four five albums that they really didn't need to do it they didn't need to do them because they never could figure out they they spent so many day so many damn years chasing what was popular trying to find their place in an ever-changing world like we've mentioned that they lost themselves along the way they forgot how to write songs you know they got old so you know singing about the the sex and stuff got it got kind of weird and um maybe a kiss without kiss is not a bad thing what do you think um i mean there's so many tribute bands out that are going right now that it's almost as if kiss won't stop anyway because people will always be doing it yeah you know what i'm saying i mean back when the beatles broke up remember beatle mania that was a big thing for a few years. Everybody's like, it's like seeing the Beatles again. But Kiss is like one of these bands that's all over the world. Some of the best ones. <laughs> <laughs> I Professor like Steel. Fuck my life. Professor, Professor Steel. There you go. I that's like Alan. that. That's Alan. <laughs> all right. Alan, we love you, buddy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're still the hardest mother here. Miss you, brother. But, anyway. but, um, but no, but, but like, there's some really good Kiss tribute bands. And if you look on YouTube, when I was going to tell you to go, there's one overseas that does like, they'll do like just sets of the albums. They'll come out and do, there's one, they just do the Dynasty album. Then there's one where they just come out and do the Unmasked album. They're playing these deep naked city, she's so European. And you're hearing it, you're like, there's some diehard people. And like people were saying earlier, like these covers, Jorn, all these guys that cover it do like, you know, different ki types of music to Kiss songs. You know, it's when, you, cool. when you mentioned Yorn, was that Yorn Landa? Is that who you're talking about? Me, Jorn, I'm Jorn, not. I, well, well, Jorn, you were talking about, is it Jorn I, Landa? I, I know that Jorn, the Jorn record, he, he does all these Kiss songs. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking of somebody else. Okay, go ahead. Could be. I don't really know the guy's last name. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> no, you're fine. Yeah, I had shit. You got about 800 to go to catch up to me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I was just going to say like, and so it's all out there now. You know, I don't know what's going to be different unless they're going to charge Kiss money to see a Kiss tribute band. And then, yeah. then it's a little bit, if you're going to go charge somebody 100, I mean, Kiss tickets right now are like $125 probably up a ticket, you know, for something decent. And you're looking at 250 to bring you and your girl or whoever. And if you're going to charge that, then it's ridiculous. But if you let fucking go, then it's fine. You know, yeah. if you, I think they should just do the tribute bands and it's licensed the shit out to these guys. If they want to still make money off of it, or they're once they've gone on to the afterlife, they want to keep it going that way, you know, or just let it happen. You know, I mean, I mean, it, it's, it's a great thing. The kiss army is already earned it. Kiss has made their money. You know, yeah. I mean, I give those guys credit. I mean, people say they're Me only too. out there for the money. They don't need the money. I mean, they don't need, I mean, Gene Simmons worth, um, I think if I read that right, he's worth about $200 million. Gene, does he need to fucking still go out there and get to the top of, I mean, he's 70 fucking two years old, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think he's, he might even be older than that now. And I watched him a couple years ago at Penn State. We went, we got fucking like, we were three rows from the front and he goes to the top of the fucking thing. And I'm like, that motherfucker's the same age as my stepfather and he can't even get up the fucking stairs, man. And he's oh, thinking, I mean back then he still had the, they flew to the top of the, you know, he had the fucking cable. 
Yeah. Shit like that. And things, Paul's going out there across the thing and stuff. It, yep. It's just crazy. But if you're asking me if Kiss should go on with odd people and call it Kiss, I don't know if the answer is yes or no. I think it's already happening to the tribute things. Let it go on around the world. Let it go in these little bars. You look at you. You could never see the real Kiss. You've had a blast going to see that. What'd you pay? Eight, eight, three, five, eight dollars to get in? Yeah. Me, you know, well, maybe bucks? it was a, it was a casino. It was like 20 okay, bucks. Well, so maybe it was included I with probably, the buffet. I, I probably yeah. lost fifty before I even got in the in the. Yeah, but you probably didn't. Pay. Kiss was, that Kiss band was probably free to go in, and you. Right, it probably was. It probably. You know yeah, I'm, I'm just saying that's. I think that's the best way to approach it. Now, if Kiss wants to continue to make money off of it and stuff, then license the shit out to these people and let them continue to do it. And or if not, you can't do it. You know, if that's their way of making money. To me, they've made their money. If it was me, if the cease was in this thing, I'd be like, just do it. I wouldn't care. That's me. I mean, of course, if I ran around the world for the last 40 fucking years, everybody kissed my ass like them. It might, they might be in a different headspace and there's so much money. They don't know how to not make money now. Yeah. You know well, I'm I mean, it's, it'd be a perfect setup. I mean, keep Tommy and Eric replace Paul and Gene. They go out and they play all the hits. They got every single el- a classic album cover, t-shirt, headband, urinal but do cake. Think, but do you think it would be worth, would you think it would be fair to charge them a, a full kiss? concert price if you're getting the full kiss show with all the theater with all the the pyro and the video screens and all the shit that they do if you got a guy that can sound like paul stanley in 1975 why fucking not <laughs> well they've been looking for that <laughs> they've been looking i mean paul's been looking for that you know he's yeah. needed a stunt double and i'm not slamming the guy i mean no no he's, he's i mean i wish he would just i wish he would just fucking not sing i literally if, i mean he can't do the high parts just don't sing those parts you know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, to, to fly him in, it's it's obvious when I hear I was made for loving you, pitch perfect. It's not it's not happening, you know. It's not happening. No, it's not happening. But there, my opinion when I've seen him five times on this, you know, farewell tour, I've enjoyed every fucking time I've seen him. I'll go again. I'm not tired of seeing him. They can, they're welcome to my money. They've given me a lifetime of fucking music I love. They yep. are my fucking gateway band into the heavier shit. They were. It'll always have a special, special place in my heart. We just sat there and talked to. I think they do what they do. Twenty albums if we count the solo records or twenty four or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. With the solo records over that, I mean, we we and we and we knew enough. And we both, you and me, pretty much did the same thing. We're you know we're pretty much the same age bracket. We pretty yep. much got into them the same time. We kind of fell out of them the same time. And we both have our little quirky stuff the rest of the way. Yep. You know it is. And these people that are you know watching down there below and things like that where we're talking right now the same way you I mean you know some people can say a oh, kiss sucks they never did shit well you know what if you, if you if they came out with regular music and all that stuff the kiss has tons of great songs kiss has tons of great songs most of them are in the 70s i, was, I will say that into the early 80s but man come on man what a fucking run those dudes did man i mean i know the damn well, I get the phone and make a fucking five cd set and of tunes and love 350 music of kiss you know yeah and you got to think about what they did. They accomplished a lot. They revolutionized live concerts. They made them a spectacle. Everybody and, copies them now. Yeah, everybody copies them now. In 1973 or 74, when they started, they were like aliens from another fucking planet, the shit they were doing, man. They were. All the country the bands is. have bombs now. Fucking Garth Brooks said he Garth had Brooks. to have bombs. Yep, yep. You know what I'm saying? Sorry. <laughs> it's true. No, it's there true. But you, but, you know, there's warts and all on this, but hats off to Kiss, man. They're I love them. I don't care. I always love, I love them. I always support them. You know, I'm I, I'm not. I've been liked everything Paul's ever said in public, or what Gene's done to make a dollar and all that. But I fucking love them, man. I do. Yep. And I wish Ace and Peter well too. I just would, you know, I just some of the their their ways of looking at it. They were there. I wasn't there. I don't know the whole story. You know who the hell knows? They I lost heard. the plot. They lost the plot. They got they have succumbed to some of their I mean, demons. Drugs and alcohol should never come before rock and roll. Not in my opinion. No, no, it's a, a big distraction for sure. But, um, they, they're man. the ones that should have wrote the carnival as fucking soul. Right? <laughs> hey, I hate Gina, hey, Paul, hey, <laughs> Peter, been singing, hey, I hate Gina, hey, Paul, come on, hey, sing with me. <laughs> ack, ack, ack. <laughs> <laughs> we love Kiss, I don't care, I fucking love. Them. There's not a lot of great bands that very few bands have gone this distance, man. And Paul and Gene have done gone the whole way, man. Yep. Well, everybody, it's been a great night. Uh, we covered a lot of ground in uh, just over three hours. I didn't know if this would be a two-parter, but I figured me and King keeping it lean and mean, the more people you add, the more time it takes. So it was good. And, and I couldn't think of a better person to have done it with. Thanks a lot, King. It was a lot hey, of fun. 
thank you, Gene. I mean, uh, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Catman. Did you see the thumbnail? <laughs> I, dude, it's a blast. Every time's great, man. It's good interaction, man. We all, you know, we miss Alan. It's a, you know, it's the nice little triangle there. And you've yep. had some great guests. I've been watching your shows when you guys do it sometimes, I, you know, just on the fly. And you had some good shows. You can put this show's great. It's fun. It's, it's, it's entertaining. And, and everybody's entitled to their opinion. Everybody's heard mine, heard yep. his. We all, if you love every record by Kiss or the guy below, don't like Gene no more. You know, and he, it's past him for that's cool too, man. It's all about respect. Just, you know, just, you know, we're all that can talk disagree and all that without that if we're gonna sit here and flick each other off and fuck you and slam the fucking laptop down or fuck off or king valley's a dick or that guy marty's an ass kisser or he's a dick or king's cool and alan's the dick whatever the fucking <laughs> you know the fucking the, the fucking math adds up to I man it's all about fucking just enjoying the stuff and this means it is the world to me I mean, yeah. this, this, I mean, I'm 54. I've been listening to it since I was fucking nine with me Kiss. Too. I was, it's, I've got 40 fucking five years of this shit, man, of Kiss. Yep. So they mean the world to me. So I, I enjoyed the fuck out of it, Marty, and I thank you for having me. And everybody fucking listening and goofing off with us on a Friday night. Back in Absolutely. the day, I'd have been drinking and stinking. Now I'm not, and I love it, man. I'm much happier doing this, man. <laughs> I'm doing the drinking and stinking now, but not, not you know, responsibly. <laughs> not in <that> order. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But uh, we appreciate all you folks for watching us, and uh, don't fret. King will be back. He's, uh, I can say something nice about somebody. He's one of the heavy metallurgy uh, alumni, so we're, he'll definitely be back again soon. And um, uh, I don't know if we have real plans next week. I think Wednesday, the glorious uh, book club is coming back to glorious dead boys uh, we'll do that and uh, alan will definitely be back next week i hope we and, love you uh, alan buddy we, miss we love you alan we miss you and um hope you're having a good time and um yeah everybody thanks a lot we'll see you next week and thanks for joining us king don't turn off headless children rule it does all right man see y'all later cheers